time. You are. Allez. Allez. لا تقوم الساعة حتى يقاتل المسلمون اليهود فيقتلهم المسلمون فيختبئ اليهود وراء الحجر والشجر فينادي الحجر والشجر قائلا يا مسلم يا عبد الله هذا يهودي خلفي تعالى فاقتل إلا الغرقد فإنه من شجر اليهود And you have no idea how much I hope Allah is going to curse you to the rest of your life. You are Ali. Ali. Hello and welcome everybody. I hope everybody is doing okay. I hope you are safe and healthy from the coronavirus. I hope you are all whole. You and your families and loved ones. I know for some people these are difficult times so <clears throat> I hope that everyone who's watching every person that this video reaches on social media or on YouTube I hope you all are healthy and safe stay uh, inside guys just follow the rules and hopefully everybody is Okay, first let me say hello to our friends in the live chat. Hello, Debit Rai, Tamara, Ander Kingman, Kefra and Yakult, uh, Dale Lee, um, I Want to Learn, John Howe, Shelly, Traveler, Nita, Marco, Peter, The Wall, Kay Soko Films, hello dear sister, how are you? Robbie Stones, Hossein Zamani, I know you're a Shia, welcome you too. I don't hate you, my friend. I like you, actually, you're funny. Tamara, how are you, sister? Uh, Romeo, Sarah, how are you, Sarah? Sweet Sarah, how are you? Draw Ranger, Phoebe, Envy More, Anymore, sorry, Phoebe, Anymore. Gabriel Stark, Yolandi, Little Yeshao, Walter, Clear as Mud, got it. There are many of you, uh, sorry if I didn't mention your name guys, please forgive me. I love you all, including the Muslims who always curse us and call us all kind of names. Uh, we don't hate actually any Muslim, you know. We hate your Islam, because Islam have been deceiving you for at least 1400 years now. So don't be angry with us if we quote your sources if we expose your prophet and your fake religion don't hate us because we are only quoting your sources right we are only quoting your sources if quoting your sources reading what your islamic sources say means hate then you really need to go and check out what the meaning or definition of hate is muslims you call us always haters and whatnot I mean, reading your Islamic sources is a form of hate now. That means Islam is hate, right? Well, people, right? If we read Islamic sources, that means the Islamic sources are hate. Don't blame us. Blame Allah. Blame Muhammad. Right? Now, our today's topic, our today's topic is... Were the pre-Islamic Meccan or the Meccan Quraysh, the Meccans, monotheists or pagans? That's the topic of today. That's the main topic of today, guys. Now, before we actually start, I want to ask you to pray in the name of our Lord and Savior so we can be blessed and guided through today's live show. Pray with me. Dear Lord, bless our beloved audience and subscribers. Lord, thank you for your grace. And we actually believe that Jesus truly is risen. And indeed he is risen. Al-Masih qam, haqqan qam. That's what we say in Arabic. Thank you for your ultimate gift, Lord. Thank you for your grace that saved us from death. Thank you for this lovely audience and subscribers our Patreons who are always 
supporting us, who kept supporting us day in, day out for the last year. Please bless all of them and their families. Please, Lord, keep us all healthy and safe, especially from the spread of this coronavirus or coronavirus. Father, enfold us in your arms. Help us not to lean on our own understanding, but in everything acknowledge you, Lord, so that you can direct our words, thoughts, and actions. Give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give in to discouragement, taqiyya, makr, lies, or any doubt, Lord. Please, Lord, help us honor you in all our ways. Lord, I pray to you and ask you to shine your holy light on all of us, including the Muslims who might be in need and are truly seeking for the truth. We know that there are many Muslims who are actually truth seekers. So please, Lord, also shine your holy light on them. Please, Lord, open their eyes so also they can be saved. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit and please loosen my tongue on this live show so I can, I can speak the truth without any error or any shame because we should not be ashamed when we talk about the truth, Lord. Give me wisdom and courage to do whatever needs to be done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. On this live show, we will have the opportunity today to do research if the Meccans, the Quraysh tribe, the family of Muhammad, the tribe of Muhammad before Islam, if they were actually pagans or monotheists. We will allow Muslims to call us life and also Christians. But if you are a Christian, please wait till I allow you to call. Okay, so if you are a Christian, you have to wait. Only the Muslims can call us for now. Let us switch it up, guys, because last time... Um, I received many calls and I appreciate it, right guys? I appreciate it. But if you're a Christian, please hold your horses. Wait till I tell you that you Christians can also call us. Okay, so if you're a Muslim, you can call me through Skype. But if you're a Christian, you have to wait. Okay, guys? But Muslims, make sure, Muslims, make sure that if you're going to call us life, anything your prophet Muhammad said, Every source that we're going to quote will be used against him in the court of law. So I hope that Allah is awake and he's not fallen asleep again. And he will be his lifeguard guarding him and will be his personal attorney present during today's hearing, to, during today's live show to defend his prophet in the court of law. My Skype ID is DROP Christian, guys. My Skype ID is DROP Christian. Welcome everybody. Salam al Masih. Shlomo Dumshihu. That's how we say it in Aramaic. Shlomo Mshihu. And Salam al Masih. That's how we say it in Arabic. Peace of Christ to all of you, including the Muslims, who will never ever give us peace first. We have to say peace first to them, right? Assalamu alaikum. Peace of Christ. <laughs> Welcome, uh, Ramfer. We see an admin. Good that we have an admin in our midst. Maybe the other admins will join soon after. Welcome, Ramfer, brother. How are you? Keep our admins also in your prayers, guys. Welcome, everybody. Let us start. Before I actually start my live show, we have a Shia Muslim, Hussein Zamani. Hussein Zamani, you are listening, right? Give me one Hussein Zamani if you are listening. Hussein Zamani, Mayday, Mayday, Earth to Hussein Zamani. Are you listening, brother? I hope you are listening. And we have another Shia, Freebie, another Shia. Okay, we have two Shia Muslims today. We have two Shia Muslims who are actually not uh, men enough to call us life. They're always in the chat and, you know, they are trolling the chat, but it's okay. Hussein Zamani, you, you challenged me, you challenged me to find your hadith from Shia sources, right? You challenged me to provide a hadith from Shia sources that will 
show that Shia is a false sect like the Sunni sect because you Shia Muslims are the same. You, Shia, Sunni, I don't care. You're all the same. You're all followers of uh, and worshippers of Muhammad. There's no difference between Shia, Sunni. Uh, you all the all the same, right? Okay, here, here, Mr. Hussein Zamani, you challenge me. He comes. I accept the challenge. I accept the challenge. Here is your hadith. This is a Shia hadith, guys. Let me put it in the chat so people are not confused. This is a Shia hadith from Furu' al-Kafi. Highly, highly respected, highly respected Shia source, right? Highly respected Shia source. Furu' al-Kafi, right? You see it? Chapter Shoe Colors, hadith number 12,000. 591 wrote that down Mr. Hussein and free B you two Shia boys write the hadith number down 12,000 hadith number 12,591 let me show you that Shia Shia hadith are even more funny and more stupid than even the Sunni hadith right here comes the hadith read with me you you challenge me, I accept your challenge to show you that you Shia are even more jokers than the Sunnis. Read with me guys. I entered on Abu Abdullah wearing a black shoe. So this guy who is talking here had black shoes, right? Do you see it? Black shoes. And he said, so Abu Abdullah responded, he said, why are you wearing a black shoe? So Abu Abdullah is asking this person, why are you wearing a black shoe? Did you not know there are three char uh, sorry guys, my English sometimes characteristics in it. So there are three characteristics in it. The narrator said, I said, what are they? So what are those three? May I be your ransom? He said, Abu Abdullah said, it weakens your vision. So guys, watch for the three. Right? It weakens your vision, loses your penis. So if you wear black shoes, your penis will lose and bring you this depression. On top of that, it is part of the arrogant apparel. Wear the yellow shoes. Don't ever wear black shoes. If you're a Shia, don't ever wear black shoes. Always make sure to wear a to, to, to wear yellow shoes for in the three for in it is three carat carat sorry I have difficulties with this word anyway the narrator said I said what are they what are these good characteristics he said it sharpens the vision strengthens the penis your penis will be become hard brother and puts away the depression and furthermore it is part of the prophet's apparel so, uh, Mr. Shia boy, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Hussein, I'm speaking from Kiev, Hiro, 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 Mr. Hussein Zamani, never ever, never ever wear black shoes, brother. Make sure to wear yellow shoes. Because if you wear black shoes, brother, it will loosen your penis, you will lose your eyesight, your vision, and it will give you depression. Brother, did you hear it, brother? Brother, you see, Shia hadith, Shia hadith are even more and bigger jokes than the Sunni hadith. This is Shia, brother. I must check it myself. <laughs> yeah, go check it. Go, go, go check it. Go, go. Just go, just go, just go. Idiot. You must be an idiot to be a Shia. You must be an idiot, a bigger idiot, to be a Shia than the Sunni. I mean, even Sunni hadith don't have such jokes in them. I mean, which person in 2020 accept this kind of nonsense? If you wear black shoe, brother, you will, you will have a flaccid penis brother your penis will not be hard look it will loosen your penis if you wear black shoes this is the beauty of shia hadith brother this is very authentic hadith brother this is al-kafi 
one of the most authentic books of, of, of Shia Islam, brother. Shia Islam, that's what the guy said right in the chat. Shia Islam is the truth sect, brother. Muhammad said there are 73 sects in Islam and only one sect is the truth. But Muhammad, of course, as always, he did not say which one it is. So Muslims have to guess, guesswork. They have to assume, is it Shia, is it Ahmadiyya, is it uh, Ishma'aliyya sect, is it, uh, is it the, the Sunni sect, is it, is it the Salafi, who are the, the correct ones? Allahu A'lam, Allahu A'lam. So make sure as a Shia, never ever wear black shoes because you will have a limp <coughs> pee-pee, brother. Limp, yeah, limp. You will go limp, brother. Guys, there are many people laughing. Why are you laughing in the chat, guys? Come on. This is truth, man. This is Shia, man. Why are you, why are you guys laughing? It's not funny. This is true. I mean, the guy, you heard the guy, he was challenging me in the chat, bro. Why are you laughing? It's not funny, bro. This is, this is true, brother. Look, you wear black shoe, you will have soft penis, brother. Guys, come on, man. You must be crazy. You must be out of your mind to be a Muslim in 2020. Honest to God. Uh, well, guys, this was, this is not really the topic of today, but since the, the Abdul challenged me in the chat, the Shia Abdul challenged me in the chat, you know, we don't run from challenges, right? Right? It doesn't say that, Rob Christian. <laughs> Anyway, let it go, Rob Christian. Let it go. Let, let it go, people. But make sure to not ever wear black shoes. Else you will have a limp penis, brother. Your penis will become very soft, according to the Shia authentic hadith. Back to the topic of today. Were pre-Islamic Meccans pagans or monotheists? Uh, Pistol Pete, thank you so much for the donation. Thank you for your support. Let me read your super chat. Thank you for the super chat. Pistol Pete says, and I quote, keep destroying this filthy cult, Rob Christian. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate it. And that's what we are doing. That's our work, guys. That's our mission to destroy this evil, satanic cult called Islam. I don't care, you're Shia, I don't care what you are. Which which kind of sect of Islam you follow. It's all garbage. It's all killing the brains. I mean, come on, if you see such a hadith, is this not killing your brain cells? I mean, come on. How can you call yourself a Muslim, especially Shia Muslim, if you believe in this nonsense? I would not be a Shia Muslim for a second if I such, saw such a hadith. Even if it's Da'if hadith, but it's not Da'if, this is Al-Kafi. This is like uh, basically the Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim of Shia. Right? One of the, or maybe one of the, of the authentic sources to go to as Shia. Now Muslims, guys, and this is actually proof, this is actually proof for our today's topic that Muslims do not dare to ask questions about Islam. They are, you know, many Muslims are born into Islam, you, you know, and even if we go to the Quran, like for example, like this ayah, Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter Al-Ma'idah, chapter 5, ayah 101, it says, all you who believe, so you Muslims, all the Muslims, all you believe, ask not about things which, if made plain to you, may cause you to trouble. So if you are going to ask questions in Islam, you, you might leave Islam. So the moment you start questioning Islam, right? It will cause you to leave Islam. So Islam is for people. Guys, pay attention, please. Islam was created by Muhammad for people who do not, not care about their brains, who do not respect their own brains. So if you're a Muslim, that means you are nothing but a robot. You're a slave. You are not allowed to think for yourself. And the proof is in front of you, right? Do you have any Muslim, guys? Do we have any Muslim who wants to call? Guys, like I said in the beginning of the live chat, 
if you are a Christian, please wait. Don't call me yet, okay? I'll, we will allow Christians to call, but please wait. Let's see if we will have uh, Muslims guests first, all right? We will allow you as a Christian to call later, all right, guys? Thank you, Pinpoint. God bless you, my friend. Pinpoint says, together we are strong people. Spread the works of R.C., Christian Prince, David Wood, Apostate Prophet, and other, please. Translate, please. Exactly. Guys, make sure to download our videos. Please don't also forget to subscribe. Smash that like button. If you like our work, subscribe. Share our videos. Because the truth must go out. We need to expose Islam. So maybe then, and maybe then Muslims are open for the truth. And who is the truth? Our Lord Jesus Christ. When he said, I am the way. Ana huwa tariq. I am the way. Al-haq, the truth. Wal hayat, the life. Right? I'm saying it also in the Arabic. Ana huwa tariq. Al-haq, wal hayat. That's what Jesus said, right? I am the way, the truth, and life. So he's the life bringer. He is the truth, right? Which is one of the 99 names of Allah, by the way. Muhammad stole it and he uh, put it uh, as a name for Allah. But, you know, Muhammad was copying Jesus, man. When Jesus said, I am the truth. So if you are a Muslim, never ever ask questions because according to chapter 5, one of Ayah 101, you might leave Islam if you ask too many questions. Now, Miskin, Ana huwa al-miskin ya peacemaker. Ana huwa al-miskin. Who is the miskin who is a believer of Islam in 2020? Are, am I the miskin or the kathab? Inta huwa al-kathab ya kathab. Peacemaker, I challenge you, if you call yourself a seeker of truth and you think you have the courage and the knowledge to call me and refute me live on air because we are live on air, Peacemaker, uh, if you call yourself a man, open up Skype, call me on my live show, my Skype ID, my Skype ID is the Rob Christian. If the admins want to provide it to guys, if the admins are here, please. Provide my Skype ID. This is my Skype ID. If you want to call us live. Call me peacemaker. There's no need to write in Arabic here, donkey. I'm the only Arabic speaker here. No one here knows Arabic cup except that freebie guy, that another Shia do idiot. Right? Shia idiot. Who believes that if you wear black shoes, you will have a flaccid penis. Your penis will become very soft, right? You've seen the hadith, right guys? For the people who just joined. Don't ever wear black shoes according to Al-Kafi hadith. Because you will have a soft penis, right? Your penis will not become hard. So make sure to always wear yellow shoes, brother. Anyway, guys, anyway. If we go to the Quran, to go back to the topic, if we go to the Quran, chapter Al-Ma'idah, Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ayah 69, we can read the following. Surely they that believe, who are the Muslims, right? And those of the Jews and the Sabians and those Christians, who, whosoever believes in Allah and the last day and works righteousness, nor fear, no fear shall be on them, Neither shall they sorrow. So, guys, guys, listen what Muhammad was saying here. We know it's Muhammad who is fabricating. There is no, nothing called Allah. So, if you are a Muslim, you are a Jew, you are a Sabian, you are a Christian, Allah will, you know, there, there, Allah will protect you. Allah will protect you. There is no fear for you as a Christian, as a Jew, as a Sabian. Neither shall they sorrow. But wait. Sabians are star worshippers. Wasabiuna, right? Wasabiuna. The Sabians are star worshippers. How did star worshippers become believers? Is there any Muslim who thinks who has the courage and the knowledge to address this question? Can you answer the question how Sabians, we know that Sabians 
were worshippers of stars. They were mushrikeen. How did the Sabians became believers? I want to understand this, guys. I want to understand how Allah, we know it's Muhammad in the Quran. This is the yellow pages of Muhammad. How did the Sabians, who are star worshippers, how did they become believers? And how is Allah saying there will be no fear for them? I mean, these are star worshippers. Right? Any Muslim? Any Muslim who thinks he has the courage and the knowledge to call me and refute me? أنت مثل الولد يا يا ولد ابن ولد يا ولد يا 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 كذاب ابن كذاب call me and refute me guys look he's he's acting tough this peacemaker he's acting tough he's writing in Arabic you know how Muslims especially the Arabic speaking Muslims they are so proud that they speak Arabic call me and let's see who is who is a liar who is a كذاب you أنت يا جبان ولا أنا يا جبان ابن جبان انت جبان ابن جبان دالي دالي سابيانس ار ستار ورشيبرز دي ور ايفن ذا انيميز اوف ذا جوز ان ذا تايم اوف ذا جوز هاو ديد ذي بيكيم دي دي ور باغنز سابيانس ار باغنز هاو ديد ذي بيكيم بيليفرز نو انسر سابيانس جايز فور يور انفورميشن Sabians used to worship stars. Stars. How did they become believers? I want to know. Right? Tell me. Yeah, Jaban ibn Jaban. Call me and refute me. I mean, it's so easy. It's so easy to only stay in chat, you know, be a kid. But if you call yourself a man, Call us. The, the line is open, man. No Muslim. Wow. All right. Guys, let me show you that Muhammad himself was a, a Sabian. He was a star worshiper. He was a Sabian. And here is Sahih al-Bukhari. Do you see it? Sahih al-Bukhari. Hadith number 344. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 344. Do you see it? Let us go back. Muhammad is, and his uh, men are asking for water, right? From a well. And there's a lady who is calling Muhammad a sabi. Do you see it? Do you see it? A sabi'in or a sabi'un. And a singular is called a sabi. Right? Do you see? If we go down, then suddenly, the Sabis are a sect of people of the scripture who recite the books of the Psalms. So, suddenly, <laughs> the Sabians became people of the scripture. But wait, people of the scriptures are the Jews and the Christians. Suddenly, the Sabians are also people of the scripture. But wait, Ya Abdul, son of Abdul, Ya Abdul, son of Abdul. God gave you brains. Think, how how the Sabians, how are they people of the scripture? And how are they believers according to chapter 5, Ayah 69, when the Sabians used to worship stars? So you see, Muhammad was a Sabian, right? Muhammad himself was a Sabian. And he's called a Sabian. Muhammad didn't say to the woman, no, no, don't call me a Sabian. He was a Sabian. This is why Muhammad stole going around the Kaaba Tawaf from the Sabians. It's a Sabian practice, a pagan Sabian practice. The Shahada is a Sabian Shahada. Even the Shahada that Muhammad took and implemented in Islam comes from the Sabians. Right? Five praying five times a day is a Sabian practice. What's left? I mean, what's left? So, suddenly, star worshippers became believers, according to Muhammad. You know why Muhammad did this, guys? Because, in a nutshell, 
everywhere Muhammad went to, he went to the Sabians, he said, I'm a Sabian. He went to the Jews, he said, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a believer like you. So if suddenly he's a, he's a like, he's like the Jews. He goes to the Christians, he says, I'm also like the Christians. He goes to the pagans, pagans, we'll prove to you that th there's nothing called pagan guys. We're going to refute that. So if you are interested, we're going to refute that the Quraysh of Mecca were not actually pagans. And we have proof for it. So Muhammad, every, to every group he went to, he became like them. There's certainly nothing fishy going on here, right guys? Yes, uh, K. Soko Films, yes. I, I, I am wearing yellow shoes at the moment because, you know, at the moment, because, you know, this, this hadith make me, make me uh, scared, man. I mean, when I saw this hadith, I became scared. I'll, I will, from now on, I will stop wearing black shoes. I don't want to have a, you know, I mean, I'm a married guy, man. If I don't wear yellow shoes, according to Shia hadith, I will have a soft penis, man. No, but look, it's in front of you. According to the very authentic Shia hadith, hadith number 12,591, make sure to not wear black shoes. Why? Because it will weaken your eyes, your vision. It will loosen your penis. <laughs> And it will bring you the brush. So make sure to wear yellow shoes. Brother. I mean, uh, Shia, you Shia are more funny than the Sunnis, man. So, you know, if you have black shoes at your house, throw them away. Throw them in the garbage bin because you never know, right? And this is Islam 101, bro. What can we do? This is, this is the funny... Yeah, Hussein Zamani, Hussein Zamani, are you now ashamed? You challenge me to provide a Shia source, a very authentic Shia source, and I accepted your challenge, and now you're saying, yeah, repeat the same, <clears throat> that's your job, right? Look what he's saying. And this guy has a disgusting mouth, same like his prophet. Didn't your prophet say, if to a Sahaba, if you're proud about a Jahiliyyah, go bite on the penis of your fathers. And again, penis, it's, every, it's the religion of the penis, man. Everywhere you go, you will see, uh, they're talking about the penis. So now, first you challenge me. Look at this, look at this idiot Shia boy in the chat. First you're challenging me when I accept your challenge and I put this Shia hadith on your head. I drop it like a hammer on your head. Now you're crying. You're crying. Why are you crying? Look, let me put what you're saying again for the people who didn't see it. You're said, yeah, repeat the same. Yeah, I don't want, want to use that word. That's your job. Yes, it's my job to expose your evil cult, your satanic cult, and you're crying. Why are you crying? You are challenging me. I accept your challenge, and, you, and now you're still crying? What's wrong with you, man? Brother, she is the truth. Well, uh, make sure to... To stop you wearing your black shoes, man. If you have uh, Nikes who, that are black, if you are Nikes or Adidas that are black, throw them away, man. I, I mean, no. If you are a man, you don't want to have a, a, a flaccid penis, man. You have, you want to have a very strong penis, man. And now he's ashamed. Exa exactly, amazing grace. Now he's ashamed. First he's challenging me. Now he's ashamed. Can you can you believe this? Can you believe this? Oh man. Brother, you mistranslate. Yeah, yeah. I mean I, I mistranslate, brother. I mistrans now it's mistranslation, brother. Guys, didn't Christian Prince mention this hadith a couple days ago? And now we are we are the ones who are mistrans. Brother, brother, yeah, yeah, Shia boy. You do you are not an Arab. You don't read Arabic. How do you know if I'm mistranslating? How do you know I'm mistranslating? You, you don't know Arabic. <laughs> yeah, Hussein Zamani, you don't know Arabic, yaakhi. You don't know Arabic. You're not an Arab, you're a Pakistani or an Indian. <laughs> how am I, how do you know I'm mistranslating? I'm the Arab here, not you. Guys, I'm mistranslating, brother. Christian Prince mentioned this hadith. I mentioned this hadith. I, I'm giving you the source. I'm even giving you the chapter. Go check it out.
Lord of mercy. Oh man. Oh man. Anyway, let me go back, guys. <clears throat> so Muhammad is called the Sabi, as we mentioned. Suddenly the Sabians are believers, but at the same time they are star worshippers. They are the actual pagans of Mecca, right? Because in Mecca also Sabians used to live there. Not only the Quraysh, right? The Quraysh, guys, the Quraysh of Mecca actually had the keys to the Kaaba. The Kaaba of Mecca, right, were in the hands of the Quraysh. And to be more specific, uh, in the hands of the grandfather of Muhammad. That's what the Muslims claim. So the Quraysh of Mecca before Islam, guys, I need you to pay attention because we are on topic now, okay? The Quraysh of Mecca before Islam already practiced Tawheed. You know, Muslims are always proud about Tawheed, right? Allah is one. Allah is one, right? That's why they, they are so proud about it, right? That's what they claim. There's nothing called Allah is one, but let it go, guys, for a second. So the Quraysh, the pagans before Muhammad was born, the family of Muhammad practiced Tawheed. Right, guys, give me one if you're with me. I hope I'm not putting you asleep. Because this is very important. If you care about the pre-Islamic era before Islam, right? The pre-Islamic era, you should focus from now on. All right. We had fun. I know we, you know, we talked about the yellow shoes. We had fun, but now let us focus a little bit. You know, after fun, we need to pay attention again. <laughs> so note, note. Quraysh are the pagan tribe of Muhammad. Well, that's what they claimed. What's, that's what the Muslims have been always told that they are pagans. Today we're going to refute that the Quraysh of Mecca before Muhammad were actually not pagans. This is why I put it like this, right? Pagan. They are not pagan. All right. And later when Muhammad invaded Mecca by, with an army, right? He came with an army and because these people did not know, that he was going to come and invade, they surrendered, right? But we will mention that later, okay guys? So later they became Muslims, but they already practiced Tawheed, right? They believed in Tawheed, unification. Tawheed, guys, means unification, all right? And for, let me give you an example, guys. Let me give you an example. Ana awahid. Ana awahid al-imra'a ma' zawjiha. Right, if I was a priest, let's say, right, and I'm going to uh, marry a woman with her husband, right, I'm going to say, "Ana awahid al mar'a ma zawjiha," right? So they will become one. Do you hear it? Tawheed awahid, tawheed awahid. So I'm going to unify a man and a woman to become one. Do you hear it? It's unification, unify, tawheed awahid. Tawheed a wahid. Did you catch it? When you are going to use it as a verb, you can say a wahid, right? Do you see it? Tawheed. The noun tawheed and the verb a wahid, for example. Did you catch it, guys? Are you guys? Are you still following? Give me one if you're following. Yes, Giorgio. Giorgio Daher to make one. To unify, it's unification, right? So the Quraysh of Mecca before Islam already practiced Tawheed, and we're going to prove it to you. All right, we're going to prove it to you. Let me first go to chapter 22, guys, to so you can understand what happened in the life of Muhammad when he was in Mecca with the pagans. Guys, by the way, pagans between brackets. There's nothing called pagans, and we're going to prove it to you today. But for an introduction, let me tell you about the life of Muhammad. What Muhammad did, what did he say to the Quraysh, his own family, the Quraysh? So let us see how we are going to do it, all right? Guys, I st I'm still not recovered from my uh, sore throat. Right? Just a second, guys. Just a second.
All right, guys. <clears throat> yeah, my wife came and she gave me an ice cream, uh, but she did not know that I was in the middle of a live chat. So there's no need to eat an ice cream and talk at the same time. I mean, it's kind of hot at the moment here. <laughs> and really, it's, that's very sweet of her, but I gave her back the ice cream. She didn't know that I was on the mic. Sweet, huh? I have a very sweet wife, guys. Yeah, she's pregnant and I'm going to become a father in a couple of uh, months. So, yeah, look how sweet she is, right? Yeah. But let us continue, guys. <clears throat> Chapter 22, Surat Al-Hajj. It's in front of you. Surat Al-Hajj, Ayah 52. Look what it says, guys. Please focus with me. Give me a one. Sorry for the for that interruption. I 52, it says, And all the noble messengers or prophets whom we sent before you, it occurred with all of them that whenever, guys, and here comes the disaster. Here comes the disaster. That whenever they recited, what did they recite? The divine revelation, right? It's talking about the divine revelation. So all the prophets, all the prophets, not one, not two, all of them, all the Islamic prophets, the, all the 124,000 Islamic prophets, that whenever they recited the divine revelation of Allah, the message of Allah, Satan, uh-oh, uh-oh, who, 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 Muhammad who, Allah who, Satan included a bit from his own speech in their recitation. Uh-oh. Allah, Allah, where are you to protect all the 124,000 prophets, including Muhammad? Where are, where are you Allah? Where are you Jibreel to protect Muhammad and all the prophets of Islam? All the 124,000 of them. There was a small hiccup. Refresh if you... I lost you for a second for some reason. Are you with me, guys? Give me one if you can still hear me. You know, we are live on air and, uh, you know, it's YouTube. Okay, you, you're with me, guys? Okay, good, good. We are back, we are back, okay. Make sure to tell the people to refresh in the chat if you have difficulties. So, again, Allah is asleep. Jibreel did not notice that all the prophets of Allah, not one, not two, but all of them, whenever they started to recite the Quran or the whatever, whatever the scripture, right? All of them, Satan included a bit of his own speech in their divine recitation to the people. Do you see it? So Muslims who say that the satanic verses did not happen in the life of Muhammad, you are liars, you have no shame, you have no honor and you have no dignity when you say that Muhammad did not deliver the satanic verses to the Quraysh of Mecca. It's in your Quran and it's in front of you. Right? It's in front of you. Guys who are listening, for the people who are listening, whenever you debate a Muslim and you bring up the topic, the satanic verses, it's in the Quran. No Muslim can deny it. They cannot say it's da'if. Right? It's, they cannot say it's da'if. It's in front of you. Do you see it? All the prophets, including Ishmael, including even Adam, because the Muslims say Adam is a prophet. We don't believe Adam is a prophet. but Ishmael, uh, Musa, right? The Islamic Moses, Abraham, all of them, whenever they recited divine revelation, Satan came in between and he put his own speech in that same recitation of Allah. Where is Allah when he said in another ayah, he will make sure to protect his slaves from Satan. Clearly Allah did not deliver his promise. It was an empty promise. Jibreel was eating ice cream brother. Jibreel was eating ice cream and he forgot to protect Muhammad from Satan. I think Jibreel was enjoying his ice cream, guys, you know. Where is Allah and where is Jibreel when you need him? 
Yeah, uh, Hussein, uh, Hussein, did you, did you wear your, did you already drop your black shoes and start to yellow, wear yellow shoes? Did you, did you drop your black shoes in the, in the garbage bin, my friend? Make sure to drop your black shoes, man. Throw it away, man. You're a Shia, right? You have to believe in the hadith. Please highlight what, Giorgio? Giorgio, highlight what? Can you be more specific, please? No, Giorgio, Giorgio does not mean Allah will copy. Uh, no, it says, guys, it says that whenever, guys, you have to listen carefully. Listen, please. The ayah is in front of you. It's very crystal clear. Whenever a prophet, whenever a prophet started to recite the, for the very first time, he started to recite this, the, the divine revelation of Allah in Islam, including Muhammad, always Satan comes in between. Do you see it? That whenever they recite, that whenever the prophets recite the message to the people, Satan, Shaitan, Satan, the devil, included a bit from his own satanic speech in their recitation to the people, right? Then Allah, after the damage has been done, after the damage has been done, then Allah sends Jibreel to obliterate, to abrogate what Satan included and then Allah fortifies his verse and Allah is knowing all wise. So after the damage, guys, after the damage has been done by Satan, Allah wakes up, Jibreel stops eating his ice cream and he sends Jibreel to fix what Satan did to the Quran. This is Quran, you cannot say this is Da'if. This is Quran, brother. Let, guys, let's see if Hussein Zamani will say it's Da'if. Hussein Zamani, is the Quran Da'if, brother? Brother, huh? Is the Quran of Allah Da'if? Yeah, Allah, Allah forgot to, you know, forgot about Satan. Seems that Satan is more powerful than Allah himself. I mean, if Satan can play with the words of Allah, and he can put his own words in the words of Allah, and deceive Muhammad, Muhammad has, this does not know. Is it Satan? Is it Jibreel? He doesn't know. Yeah, the word is Yansakhu, right? Fayansakh Allah, right? Fayansakhu Allah. That means Allah is abrogating, right? Allah is abrogating. The word is Nasakh, Fayansakh Allah. That means Allah abrogates the what Shaitan put in. That's what the Arabic says. You understand? So Allah, after the damage has been done already by Satan, suddenly Allah wakes up and he starts to abrogate what Satan has done to the Quran of Allah. Yeah, Nasakh is abrogating, erasing, ab <laughs> choose any, any translation and they will all say the same basically. Right? Right guys? So when you ever, whenever you debate a Muslim and you bring up the satanic verses and they say it's da'if, give them chapter 21, ayah 52, right? Because it's in the Quran. They cannot say it's da'if. If they say da'if, then they have to throw away this ayah, this entire ayah from the Quran, right? The, the whole ayah, they must go, throw it out. Throw this out. Put a big red cross on it, right? Take notes, people. Exactly, pinpoint. Take notes. No, RC. It doesn't say that, RC. <laughs> exactly. I like this quotation, guys. Muslims recently started to use that a lot. No, CP. No, RC. It doesn't say that, RC. Take notes, please. All right? So... To make it even more clear, guys, let's say for some people it's not clear what this ayah is saying. If we go to the tafsir, right? What, let us see what the tafsir says, right? Chapter 22, see, do you see it? Chapter 22, same chapter, same ayah, tafsir, right? As Baba Nuzul, highly respected, as Baba Nuzul by Al Wahidi. As Baba Nuzul by Al Wahidi, tafsir. See this Arabic word? It means tafsir. T, tafsir, tafsir. Right? 
the exegesis basically for the ayah. The explanation for the ayah. You see it? Same ayah, same chapter, chapter 22, ayah 52. Chapter 22, ayah 52, tefs here, right? So a part of the ayah has been quoted here, as you see. Then it says, the commentators of the Quran said, now guys, you have to pay attention, okay? Let's say Rob Christian is lying. Rob Christian is lying. But let us see what the tafsir daddies, what the old school tafsir daddies said about this. This is not Rob Christian, right? This is an Islamic website. Let me scroll down for you to see. This is the website by Royal Ahl al-Bayt. This, this website has actually been owned by the King of Jordan himself. And they claim that this King of Jordan, he's a descendant of Muhammad himself. So <laughs> the King of Jordan, Islamic country, he owns this website. So don't say, uh, Rob Christian, you made this website, right? So let us go back. When the Messenger of Allah saw that these people were shunning him, who, right, who are those people? Those are the Quraysh of Mecca, right, his own tribe. He was aggrieved by their rejection. So the Quraysh of Mecca, guys, you have to pay attention. The Quraysh of Mecca, they rejected Muhammad in the first place, right? And he was really sad about it, right? He was really sad that they rejected him and his message that he brought to them. And he secretly, Muhammad secretly wished that Allah, exalted is he, reveal something to, the, to him which would bring him and his people closer to each other. So guys, you need to pay attention. The Quraysh, the Meccans, were the people of Muhammad. And he was between them and he was trying to tell them, you know, come to Islam. He was inviting them to Islam and they rejected him, right? They kept rejecting him, even his own family. Keen as he was, Muhammad was so keen, keen as he was to see them accept faith. So he was hoping that they will become a Muslims. One day, look at this beautiful story. One day, he sat in one of the congregations of Quraysh, which attracted a huge number of its members. So the Quraysh had a meeting, a big meeting, right? And Muhammad was there and his Sahaba were there, the companions of Muhammad were there. And he wished, Muhammad wished that Allah, exalted he, does not reveal to him on that day anything that might repel them for him. So he hoped that Allah would not give, them, give him something or divine revelation that it will make it even more worse. But Allah, Allah as always does not listen. Allah then, <laughs> Lord of mercy. Allah exalted is he, revealed to him the Surah Al Najm. Surah Al Najm. What's Surah Al Najm, guys? The chapter. This is chapter Surah 53, right? Chapter 53. That's this one. Surah Al Najm, right? Now, guys, are you are you still following? Guys, are you still following? Give me one if you're still following, please, so that I'm sure that I'm not putting you asleep. Well, Hussein Zamani, ya Shia boy, if you're not interested, go. No one is forcing the sword of Ali and Muhammad on your neck to stay. If it's if you don't like it, go. Right, go. Shia boy, I'm, I think you're still hurt that we showed you the hadith about the yellow shoes, right? This is why you are so sad and ashamed, right? You're ashamed about your Shia hadith. Anyway, so this is talking about chapter 53 of the Quran. The Messenger of Allah, let us continue, the Messenger of Allah, Allah bless him and give him peace, started to recite chapter 53, right? So Muhammad started reciting from chapter 53, you know? He starts to begin, recite chapter, ayah 1, 2, all the way, right? And then he was here, he came to here. Now listen what happened, guys. The Messenger of Allah, he started to recite, but when he reached, have you thought upon Al-Lat and Al-Uzza and Manad the third? So when Muhammad reached here, this ayah, guys. Guys, I need you to take notes. This is very important. This is describing how the satanic verses came into existence. All right, guys? So when he reached ayah 19 of chapter 53, Surah Al-Najm. So did you observe the idols Al-Lat Al-Uzza and subsequently the third Manad? So when he reached these two ayahs, that's what the tafsir says. Have you thought upon Allah and Al-Uzza, Al-Manad, the third, the other? 
ayas 19 and 20. 19 and pay attention 19 and 20 from chapter 53 ayas 19 and 20 look what happens next the devil started to put on his tongue on whose tongue on muhammad's tongue shaitan the devil gave him the satanic verses so the satanic verses started to appear immediately after ayah 20 right here between here between 20 and 21 the devil started to put on his tongue what he had secretly wished and hoped for and said, That's what the Arabic says, right? These are the mighty cranes. Al-Gharaniq, the mighty cranes, the, the, the mighty birds. Al-Gharaniq, the mighty birds, the mighty cranes. And their intercession is hoped for. Those are, so th those highlighted words, guys, those are the satanic verses that you see here. Those words that you see here are the satanic verses. And where were they? They came immediately after Ayah 20. So here, guys, between 20 and 21. So Satan put it here. Guys, do you see it? Let me make this bigger. Maybe you are not seeing this. So Satan put it here. Do you see my, uh, my mouse, guys? So here, the satanic verses used to be. Originally, between 21, sorry, between, no, let me, let me say it correctly. Between 20 and 21, here, sorry, here. Between 20 and 21, here. All right? Those, th those words that we highlighted for you, normally they used to be here. Then look what happens. When the Quraysh, right, when he, they heard the satanic verses from Muhammad, the satanic verse that Satan himself put on the tongue of Muhammad. Do you see it? These are the mighty cranes and their intercession is hoped for. The Quraysh were very happy. They were very happy about this. Look, Muhammad is saying very beautiful stuff about our idols. Right? They were very happy with Muhammad. Do you see it? So the... Quraysh of Mecca, the family of Muhammad who rejected him, they were started to be very happy about him, Muhammad, because he's saying beautiful stuff about their Allah, al uzza wal manat. Yes, those are the satanic words. Those are the satanic verses, right? The Messenger of Allah, bless him and give him peace, if we, if we continue on reading, carried on. So after Muhammad delivered the satanic verses that used to be here, between 20 and 21, he continued all the way down and he finished the entire surah right all the way ayah 62 that's what the tafsir is saying right so he carried until reciting until the end of the surah so he finished the entire chapter guys are you still following give me one so he finished the entire chapter and the story continues so he gave the whole Quran, this chapter of the Quran, he gave the whole chapter to everyone who was there, the Muslims, the, the Quraysh, the Meccans, right? Everyone who was there, they got chapter 53, the whole chapter finally. Including, guys, watch, take care, including the satanic verses, right? So the satanic verses were in the chapter. Did you catch it? I hope you caught it. Guys, I hope you caught it. So the, here, the satanic verses were not removed by Allah and Jibreel yet, right? The satanic verses that you see here in front of you, they are still present in chapter 53. So, what happened then? He carried on until he finished the entire surah, and then he bowed down. He bowed down, sujood, right? He bowed down and prostrated. Sujood is an act of worship in Islam. Prostration is an act of worship. So Muhammad bowed down to Allah, al uzza wal manad The daughters of Allah. Uh -huh. Do you see how Muhammad, how Muhammad bowed down to Allah, al uzza wal manad The daughters of Allah. Did you catch what happened? So Muhammad bowed down. All the Muslims became all pagans, 
as the Muslims claim they are pagans, all the Muslims committed shirk and prostrated. Everyone, including Abu Bakr, Ali, everyone who was there, everyone, right? And all the so-called pagans who were present prostrated too. Did you catch it? Everyone became a pagan. I mean, you Muslims always say, before Islam, the people of Mecca were all pagans. So your prophet became a pagan. The Muslims who were there became pagans. And the pagans were happy with Muhammad. And they bowed down too. They prostrated. It's not false, you donkey. Listen, listen, listen to that. Uh, let me quote what he said. Guys, look at this donkey. Yet donkey, son of a donkey. And I'm not trying to insult any real donkey. Yeah, donkey, son of a donkey. It's in your Quran. It's in your Quran. Again, for the donkeys between us and all the noble messengers or prophets whom we send before you, it occurred with all of them, all the messengers, all the prophets, all the, all the 124,000 messengers, all the 124,000 prophets, including Muhammad, that whenever they recited the Quran, the Quran or Torah, or whatever, according to the Quran itself, Satan included a bit from his own speech. Do you see it? In their recitation, including your prophet, your donkey, your idiot, to the people. So here you see, this is chapter two, 22, ayah 52. Don't say uh, this is da'if. If you're saying this is da'if, that means your Quran is da'if. Your potato, son of a potato. Is this ayah da'if? Wait, wait, guys, let me, let me, let me ask this, this coward who will never call me. This is not a tafsir, this is your Quran. Forget about the tafsir. Yes, this is tafsir that we are explaining. Forget about the tafsir for a split second. It's in your Quran. Do you see it? Yeah, donkey, son of a donkey. And I'm not trying to insult any real donkey in the process. Read it. It's in front of you. K Soko Films, dear sister, she's asking. So Isaiah, Moses, Abraham, according to this ayah, all the prophets, the Islamic prophets, not our real prophets, right? The Islamic prophets. We don't believe that uh, Moses was a Muslim. <laughs> Let me quote what she said. So Isaiah prophesying Muhammad was Satan. Everyone is a, is a satanic, right? Every prophet is a satanic prophet according to this ayah. Do you see it? It's in front of you. Every prophet delivered satanic verses. All of them. It occurred to all of them. Do you see it? Every prophet, all the 124,000 prophets, according to this ayah, all of them delivered satanic verses from Satan. I put it in the chat so it becomes more clear for everybody. Do you see it? That whenever they recited the message of Allah, then Satan comes in between, including a bit of his own satanic speech. Do you see it? In their recitation to the people. Do you see it? Satan always came in between. Allah, where is your promise that you're going to protect your slaves, your prophets from Satan? Empty promise. Allah was asleep. Allah was tired. Jibreel was having an ice cream. Or maybe Jibreel was having a smoke. Jibreel forgot about the prophets. All the time he forgets. You see how the prophet of Islam is delivering satanic verses, guys? It's in the Quran. You cannot say, you cannot say this is Daif Muslim. If you say this is Daif Ayah, you're out of Islam. So Dalili, you are out of Islam. Congratulations. Dalili, guys, became an ex-Muslim today. Salute him, please. Congratulations. Clap, clap for Dali Lee, who is calling the ayah of Allah da'if. Brother, this ayah is da'if, brother. Yay. Congratulations, Dali Lee. Congratulations. I salute you, my friend. You became a murtad today. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome back. You just left Islam, brother. Guys, give him an applaud. Give him an applaud. Everyone in the chat, give him an applaud. Clap, clap. 
This guy just left Islam. Congratulations, my friend. Da'if ayah, brother. Da'if. Da'if ayah, brother. <laughs> so guys, let us continue the tafsir, right? So all, everyone who was there started to prostrate to Allah, Al-Uzza, Wal-Manat. Thilka Al-Gharaniq Al-Ula, Inna Shafa'atahunna La Turtaja, right? So Muhammad gave the satanic verses to the Quraysh and all the Muslims, including Abu Bakr, Ali, all of them, right? Ibn Abbas, all of them, all of them became mushrikeen together with the Prophet of Islam. All those who were present, whether Muslim or disbeliever, prostrated except Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira and Abu Uhaya Said ibn Al-As, who were too advanced in age and could not prostrate. So there were two old people, guys. Because of their old age, they could not prostrate. So instead, instead of bowing down because they they had problems with their bodies or whatever, they could not bow down, so they grabbed some dirt a handful of dust and put it on their foreheads instead. Do you see it? So the old people who were present, maybe because of their bad health, you know, they are old, they could not prostrate, so they put some dirt on their heads. Do you see it? So the Quraysh, then the Quraysh they left, right? After what happened, after Muhammad gave them the satanic verses, they were really happy with Muhammad, what they heard. Do you see it? They left and they were happy. They were happy with Muhammad. Right? Muhammad gave them the satanic verses. They said, look what, do, look what the Quraysh, the tribe of Muhammad, the Meccans said. Muhammad has mentioned our idols with complimentary terms. Do you see it? They were pleased with Muhammad. They were happy with Muhammad. And, he said, and they said our idols, you know, Muhammad said beautiful stuff about our idols. About Allah, Al-Uzza, Wal-Manad. Right? The third. So Muhammad was giving positive stuff, the satanic verses about Allah al Uzza wal Manat. And then we continue reading, we know Allah gives life and takes it away. He creates and provides sustenance. So you see, the Quraysh guys already believed in Allah. Do you see it? They already worshipped Allah, who was their supreme moon idol, and he had three daughters, Allah al Uzza wal Manat. So Muhammad did not bring anything new, right? Muhammad did not bring anything new. Allah already existed before Islam. And we're going to show you that the Quraysh, from now on, we're going to show you that the Quraysh were not real pagans. We're going to show you that. So, you know, the Quraysh worshipped Allah, right? And they were happy about what Muhammad said about the daughters of Allah, Allah al Uzza wal Manat. Now that Muhammad associated them we are all with him. So suddenly they started to believe Muhammad because they thought, hey, he's, he's like us. He became like us. That evening. Now, <laughs> guys, after the damage, after the damage has done, after Satan did damage to Muhammad, after Satan played with the mind of Muhammad, after Muhammad became the lab dog of Satan himself, woof, woof, Muhammad was saying to the Satan, woof, woof, right? He became his lab dog of Satan. Muhammad became the slave of Satan at that very moment. That evening, later that evening, Jibreel comes and starts to spank Muhammad. Jibreel comes and starts to spank Muhammad. What have you done, Muhammad? Look what Jibreel is saying, guys. May the real Jibreel please stand up. Jibreel says, what have you done, Muhammad? Oh man, what have you done? What did what did what did you do? Isawit ya Nabi, what have you done? That's what way you say it in Arabic. Isawit ya Akhi, what did you do? What have you done? You recited to the people of Quraysh, you recited to the Meccans, that which I did not bring from Allah. Wow! So Jibreel started to spank Muhammad. Left and right. He put him on his lap and he started to spank him. Muhammad, that was not my words that I gave to you. That was Satan. What have you done, man? 
Glorified is he, and you said, why did I not say to you? Do you see it? So if Jibreel is not the one giving the, the, the Quran to Muhammad, then it's of course Satan. Do you see it? As we showed you, it's in the Quran, it's in the Tafsir, right? These are the satanic verses. Do you see it? That, this highlighted part. These are the mighty cranes, the gharaniq, and their intercession is hoped for. Right? This is how the bird idols look like, guys. Cranes, bird idols, right? Why? Anyone knows why they are called gharaniq, cranes? Anyone? Anyone in the chat knows why they are called cranes? Anyone? Anyone? Anyone has an idea? If the admins know the answer, please don't give me the answer. If, if, you, if you know the answer, give it to me. Accept the admins, please. No. Anyone? Come on, man. We've told you this before. Hey, K, K, Soko Films, she says to fly the praise. Exactly. You hit the jackpot, sister. These, Allah al Uzza wal Manad, they were called bird idols, cranes, because they could fly. There were intercessors between the Quraysh of Mecca, guys. So let's say like this you have the Quraysh, the Meccans, right? When they pray, they pray, right? To Allah. And this is why I'm going to tell you why they are not pagans. So the Quraysh of Mecca pray to Allah. And in between, right, you have the cranes that you see in front of you. And they deliver, right, delivery to Allah. They could fly and deliver the prayers to Allah. All the way to the supreme moon idol Allah. So they were intercessors. Right? They were intercessors. They were the middle guys. They were the middle daughters. So the Quraysh of Mecca were not actually not real pagans. They worshipped Allah. They did not associate partners with him. These idols that you see here, Allah al Uzza wal Manat, they were only delivering mail to Allah. So the Quraysh of, uh, of Mecca guys, before Islam, they actually worshipped Allah and Allah alone. So they were actually, as we mentioned before, they were practicing Tawheed before Islam. Did you catch it, guys? Did you take notes? Did you catch it? Give me one if you caught it. So the Quraysh, this is why you see the, the, you see the title of my live show, right? We're pre-Islamic Meccans of, of Mecca, right? The Meccans. Were they monotheists or pagans? That's the title, right? No, they were not pagans. They were actually monotheists. They were muwahideen fillah. They were actually unified in Allah. Thank you for the super chat, guys. God bless you. Let me read. Sorry, Rory, that I did not catch your first super chat. But let me read it. Rory Husky, 1988, saying... Hey Rob, could you watch this video and put your commentary on it on the live stream? Um, maybe you can send me, can, maybe you can send me uh, the link in my sky, please, and I will watch it and I will have a look at it and I will mention it on my next live show. All right, my friend, because I have a topic today and I'm really, you know, I need to complete my topic. All right, send me the link, please. Yeah, guys, maybe uh, one uh, one thing to con before we I continue. Uh, maybe you saw my video, the video that I uploaded recently about the the Muslim who left Islam. I had a two hour call, private call, uh, with our friend who left Islam. After two hours, he left Islam. I was really happy for him. And, and I, I uploaded the video and he sent me a message, you know, thank you that you helped me out of Islam, but please remove the video, you know, because I'm afraid, you know, not really afraid, but, you know, maybe they will recognize his voice, his family, you know, his wife is still Muslim. 
and he asked me, you know, he said just to 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 say it, you know. Uh, he says the chances of someone close to me finding the video and recognize my voice is low, but you know, you never know. So he he he, request, he sent me a request. So please don't remove it. Just make it private, you know. So you never know who maybe my family. So I said, yeah, okay, I respect that, my friend, and remove the video. And he sent he just sent me a message. He said, you know, thank you. I appreciate it, my friend, that you remove the video you know it's okay no problem you know and I told him I only put the video so that other Muslims who might be truth seeking Muslims like him they can see that there is hope for everybody right no he's not scared he's not scared he just doesn't want that his family finds out yet Right, because he's going through a very difficult time, and we respect that. We are not here to put anyone in danger, right? We are not here to put anyone in danger, right? So I respect it, and maybe you noticed that I removed the video. So let us go back to the topic, guys. Muhammad bowed down, he delivered the satanic verses, and he bowed down and prostrated to Allah, Tal Uzza, and Manat to the delivery. <laughs> goddesses the idols of the meccans that delivered the mail the prayers to the supreme moon idol allah right the moon idol allah so they were muwahideen fillah before islam they practiced tawheed prohid tawheed guys tawheed is not a new implemented thing in islam nothing is new in islam everything that is described in islam is is already existed before islam right Allah existed. Tawheed existed. Everything existed already. Right? So, the pagans, that they call pagans, are not real pagans. They were monotheists. They only had intercessors. Basically only delivery. That was their way of the delivering the prayers to Allah. Right? So guys, if you want to know where the satanic verses used to be, they used to be between 20 and 21. So after the damage has been done by Satan, Satan putting the, his Quran, sorry, his <laughs> satanic verses between 20 and 21, Jibril comes, removes them. Allah abrogates them through Jibril. Jibril spanking Muhammad, right? And he removes them from the Quran. So then Allah continues, guys, even the, the whole chapter is funny. Uh, I got a, another super chat. Thank you for the donations, guys. I, I really appreciate it. God bless you. God bless your loved ones. This time from Josh Herbal. Josh Herbal is saying, greeting, brother. Quick question. Is the abrogation of the satanic verses invalid? Because only a devil would claim to command good. God bless. No, it's not invalid, uh, my friend. Right? It's not invalid, right? Because Allah, even Allah, not only <laughs> Allah, not only abrogates the satanic verses through Jibril, Allah also abrogates His own words, right? Whenever Allah sends something down, He can remove it and send the similar. That doesn't make sense. I mean, why would you send something? Why would you send an ayah and later remove it? And sent the same similar ayah. You know, the reason behind it, my friend, my friend Josh Herbal, the reason why is Muhammad simply was forgetting ayahs. So he came with the excuse of abrogation. Al Nasikh wal Mansukh. It was a excuse for Muhammad because his Sahaba came to him and said, Hey, I was reciting this ayah. And Muhammad said, Oh, I forgot it. So to, you know, to make an excuse, Muhammad implemented abrogation. I mean, why would, how can God claim to be, or why can Allah claim to be God? Allah, how can you claim to be God? You send something down, you change your mind, and send some, another eye instead of it. That doesn't make sense. You cannot claim to be God and change your mind every second. I mean, Allah, are you a kid in a candy store? Or are you claiming to be God? Are you a kid? I mean, we know humans, children, they change their mind, right? 
imagine picture picture yourself in a shoe of a kid you are with your mommy in a candy store you see a very delicious candy and mama mommy buys it for you before you leave the the candy store you see a, a bigger more delicious candy you drop the the older one the small one and you you tell your mom mom i want another candy i want that one that looks more delicious maybe this time you want a popsicle i don't know so Allah sounds like a kid in a candy store, changing his mind every second. But we know it's Muhammad forgetting his own fabrication, his own ayahs, and calling it abrogation. Right? <clears throat> Do we have a Muslim, guys? Do we have a Muslim who wants to call? Let's see, uh, I think we have a um, call. Let me try to call this person. Binta Alim. Binta Alim, I'm calling you. Binta Alim is unavailable, why? It says you're active. Pick up the phone. What's going on? You see, it says active. You see, it's green button. It's active. Let me call again. Hello? Your life on air. Okay, please mute YouTube. Please mute YouTube, please. Your life on there, go ahead. Oof. Hello? Yes. Yeah, go no ahead. Christian, this is the ultimate daddy. Bye bye, ultimate daddy. I have no time for kids like you, bro. Let me block this donkey. Ultimate daddy, sit down and first. First, start to accept uh, real Islam. Don't give your own tafsir for the Quran and whatnot. And stop following Rashad Khalifa. Then maybe we'll take you seriously. Ultimate Daddy. It was the same Ultimate Daddy. I, know, I understand why Christian Prince keeps blocking him. This guy, he has his own version of Islam. He follows a guy called Rashad Khalifa who was stabbed by the Sunnis in the 90s. You know, for saying that the Quran is about him. And he even... He even calls parts of the Quran fake, right? Fabrications. Do we have any real Muslim guys? Do we have a Shia? Do we have a Sunni? I don't want to waste my time with a, a different hybrid or different kind of, you know. <clears throat> you want Shia Tafsir? Shia Tafsir? I think this is this is Shia. Let's see if this one gives stuffs here. This is Shia. Tafsir al Tustari is Shia, right? Let's see what this one says. Same, the same, 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 the same. Do you see it? Satan always coming in between. Shia, uh, Sunni, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. Hey, Rob Christian, could you check your Twitter? Yes, I will, Rory. Thank you for your donation, my friend. I will. God bless you. Thank you for the donations. So any tafsir, it's all the same, man. Shia, no Shia, Sunni, all the same. I think this one is also a, uh, a Shia one. Let's see what this one says. No tafsir. Wow, this one has no tafsir. This guy has no... Nothing to say about this. He's too ashamed. What about the Qushari? I think he's another Shia. This is also Shia. No tafsir. One, one at least is not ashamed to say that uh, Satan is putting his own satanic verses. Kashf al Asrar al I think this is also Shia. Let's see this one. Nothing. Nothing. And we don't even need tafsir. I mean, come on, it's in front of you. Yeah, 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 Hussein, Hussein. 
It's in front of you. It's the Quran. Do you want tafsir? We already gave you tafsir, right? From Asbab al Nuzul. Asbab al Nuzul, guys, means the reason why the ayahs send, uh, are being set down. Asbab al Nuzul. And actually, you don't really need tafsir for it. Let's be honest, it's in front of you. Whenever you have a prophet or a messenger, before you, Muhammad, all of them, it occurred with all of them, including you, that whenever they recited the eyes of Allah, the message of Allah, the Quran, the Torah. So see, because Muhammad, guys, you know what's fishy going on here? Do you see anything fishy, guys? To the people who are listening. Do you see anything fishy? The fishy part is this. Muhammad falls for the satanic verses. Satan starts to play with the mind of Muhammad. Muhammad gives the satanic verses to the Quraysh. To the Muslims who were present. Right? To fix the damage. To do damage control. Muhammad starts to lie about all the prophets. Do you see it? Because he know he's busted, right? He know he's busted. Jibril came to spank him. What is he doing? He's fabricating this first part and blaming all the prophets, lying about all the prophets, that all the prophets fell for the trap of Satan. Do you see it? It occurred with all of them. Do you see it? So not is he, <laughs> he's in, to do damage control. What is Muhammad saying in the ayah? We know it's Muhammad fabricating eyes, right? To save his behind, right? To save himself out of this disaster. He claims that all the prophets fell for the satanic verses. Not only he, but every one of them. Do you see it? Yeah, Hussein Zamani. Are you, are you wearing yellow shoes now? Hussein, Hussein. Do you wear, are you wearing? Yellow shoes? Just tell me, be honest. Did you throw away your black shoes? You give me, give me one. What's your, what's your favorite one? Yeah, 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 Jaban. Yeah, yeah, coward. Call me. Let us have some fun. Call me. Call me. Call me. Um. I have a missed call. Let me see. Guys, if you're, if you're a Christian, we have to wait, okay? John, are you a Christian? There's a gentleman who just called me. John, are you a Christian or a Muslim? If you're a Christian, I'm not going to call you for now. You have to wait, my friend. All right? John, the one, the one who calls himself John. Are you a Christian? If you're a Christian, please don't. You have to wait, okay? I will try to call you back, okay? You have to wait. Because, uh, maybe other, we have also other callers, all right? Yeah, I know, uh, Rode, uh, thank you for the donation again. No problem, my friend, okay? He's saying, sorry, I don't mean to demanding Rob Christian. All I want to people to see my video. That's all I sent on YouTube. No problem. I will uh, see your link. Thank you for sending it to me. I will look at it and I will try to mention it on the next live show. All right, my friend? Don't worry. We will mention your uh, link. Hussein, yeah, Hussein, yeah, Jaban, call me. Why are you not calling me? Why are you so scared, man? Tell your Shia Imam to call me. Um, guys, don't call, don't call him names, please. All right. You know he's calling me all kind of names in the chat and in the comment section, and he's using bad language. But don't act like him, guys. Come on. All right. No, there's no need to call him uh, names. All right, guys. He, you know, Shia, Sunni, they are all victims. And this guy, especially this guy, he doesn't know Arabic, right? He doesn't know Arabic. I mean, come on, do you need a tafsir for this ayah, guys? Really? The ayah is crystal clear. All the prophets, all the Islamic prophets, all of them, not one, not two, all the 124,000. Because Islam claims Allah sent 124,000 prophets. All of them fell for the trap of Satan. It occurred with all of them. Do you see it? That whenever they recited the eyes of Allah, the message of Allah, Satan comes in between 
including a bit from his own speech in their recitation to the people. I mean, you need to see for this? <laughs> go away, man. Just sit down, go away. I have no time for kids. And if we continue reading, look at the funny part, you know, guys. So Allah is saying, you are giving me Allah al Uzza, you're associating Allah al Uzza with me as daughters, and subsequently the third, the Manat. So Allah is, becomes angry. Guys, look at the angry Allah here. If you claim this is these are the eyes of Allah. Allah is saying, What? If we continue reading, guys, where here are the satanic verses, right? Allah is saying, What? For you, you are giving for you are the son, and for me, the daughter. So Allah doesn't want daughters, He wants a son. Allah, guys, wants a son. If we have Muslim callers, my Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Guys, please give the Skype ID in the chat, please. Help me to help you. Give them the Skype ID so they can call us. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Um, I don't want to waste time with Ultimate Potato, guys. You know, there's no need for me to talk to Ultimate Potato. All right. So Allah is saying what? You want to you want to have the son and you're giving me daughter? I don't want to have daughters. Allah wants sons, man. Allah wants only sons. Do you see it? Why are you giving me son? I, I, I want the son. Why? Look look at you, man. You're greedy, man. I want also to have a son. Allah is saying. For you, the son, and for me, the daughter? I don't want daughters. Uh, Josh Herbal saying in the super chat, brother, I, I was saying the verse of abrogation for satanic verses is clearly satanic because it says Muhammad's devil commands him for good. Yes, it does, right? If we go there, right? Right? If we go there, it says after Satan done the damage, Allah done, Allah, فَيُنْسُخُ Allah. So Allah, after the damage is done, Allah starting to abrogate what Satan is throwing in. It's already too late, right? It's already too late. Allah, why didn't you stop Satan from the first place? Why did you allow him to do damage in your Quran? Right? Why did you allow Satan to come in between and do might control for Muhammad? Controlling Muhammad, Muhammad becoming the Satan worshipper, becoming the Satan messenger. Why did you allow that Allah? Didn't you say in another ayah that you were going to protect your slaves? Right. So that's what the ayah is saying guys. I'm not going to add my own interpretation. I am reading it as it is. Right. So Allah abrogates what Satan includes. Do you see it? And then Allah fortifies his verses and Allah is all knowing, all wise. So we're not going to add anything guys, we are reading it. So before Muslims start to call us liars, we are reading the ayahs as they are. We're not adding, we're not Muslims guys. Muslims when they quote up biblical verses, they add, we don't do that. We are reading it as it is. Before anyone calls Rob Christian a liar, I am reading it as, you, as it is. I'm not adding. I am reading it as it is, All right? All right? So Allah is, you know, calling uh, the Quraysh. They are calling, he's calling basically the Quraysh greedy. For you the son, what? Allah is saying, for you the son and for me the daughter? I don't want daughters, I want the son. Why are you greedy? Allah is saying, right? Basically. Guys, I want to play a small video clip for you. Guys, thank you for your support. Don't forget to subscribe. Smash that like button, guys. If you didn't already, smash it like it's possessed like Muhammad by jinns, by Satan, the jinn. And subscribe and also, like I said, click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live. Without you guys, without your support, without the audience, we cannot do this, right? Download our videos, spread them around on all social media. We have hope for all the Muslims to leave this satanic cult. 
to drop the satanic messenger of Satan himself, Muhammad, and come back home to Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Uh, Christian princes say, Christian prince sub Indo saying, Quran is the book of Satan. Exactly, it is the book of Satan. And today we proof, proved it to you. All right. Rory, Rory, I understand, but my friend, you cannot ask me to watch a video while I'm live streaming. I have a topic, my friend. Thank you for the donations, but I, I cannot do this right now. I have a topic. I really appreciate your super chat, but I cannot teach, right, and watch videos at the same time. That's not possible. You cannot ask that from me, my friend, okay? Please, I'm sorry, but I'm having a topic and I cannot... Uh, you know, else I, I can watch thousands of videos. You have no idea how many messages I get on uh, on Skype, or, you know, in, on Facebook. I cannot accept all the requests, okay? Sorry, okay, my friend? I appreciate you. I appreciate your donation. But I will look at your link after I'm done. And I will mention it, Lord willing, on my next live show, all right? So bear with me, my friend. So I want to play a video clip for you guys. Let me play this video clip. Uh, if you are interested, put on your headset, put on your headphones, and let us watch this video together. Let me play the video. This is from Zachariah Botros, a dear friend, a dear brother of mine. He used to come to Paul Talk like us. This person that you see here, he's a Coptic Christian, right? A Coptic priest. He used to debate like us, like Christian prince, like me on Paul Talk. Later, the Muslims put 60 million on his head. This, the Muslim leaders, they put 60 million on his head. Anyone who kills him and delivers his head on a silver platter, he will receive 60 million from the Muslim leaders. So this is how dangerous he is for the Arabic Muslim world. He has his own TV station now and Muslims are after him. Right. So let me play a part and I will start to comment on what is being said on the video. All right. Let me play the part. Focus, guys. Were the people associators or were they actually monotheists? Yeah. Were the Quraysh monotheists, guys? Were they pagans or were they monotheists? The Quraysh of Mecca, guys, we will prove to you that the Quraysh of Mecca were not pagans. Watch. It's going to be a shock. Yeah. شوك. لكن دي الحقائق اللي لازم الإنسان يصل إليها من خلال الدراسة. Muslim leaders don't عزيز. tell the normal Muslims about this, right? القرشيون كانوا يعرفون الله. They knew Allah, yeah. ويوحدونه. And worshipped him alone. What? Did you did you catch it, guys? القرشيون. Did you catch it? كانوا يعرفون الله. The Quraysh knew Allah. ويوحدونه. And worshipped him alone. هل لك أي أدلة على هذا الكلام؟ Bam. وحناقش حتة. طب امال ازاي كانوا بيعبدوا الاصنام وبيشركوا بيها؟ يا اكزاكتلي لكن في الاول اوضح ليت مي كلاريفاي كده فوكس على حته ان هم موحدين بالله اتفضل اولا في التلبيه بتاعتهم قبل الاسلام لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك هذا بام ليت مي جو جو باك جايز the, the so-called pagans that the Muslims call them pagans, the Quraysh, the own family of Muhammad, they said, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهَ لَبَّيْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ Right? لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهَ لَبَّيْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ We don't commit shirk to you. We don't associate any gods to you. So do you see, guys? This is from Sira Nabawiya, the biography of Muhammad. We do not associate anyone to Allah. So they are actually unified. They practice Tawheed before Islam. And those were the family of Muhammad. So Muhammad, Islam did not bring anything new. 
The so-called pagans are not pagans. <laughs> do, you know, do you now understand why I put the title of this live show? Were the pre-Islamic Meccans monotheists or pagans? So they only worshipped Allah, but as I mentioned before, they only have intercessors, right? Only messengers. Basically, when you are praying as a Quraysh Meccan, you are praying, you have a mail delivery system to deliver your prayers by the crane birds who are Allah, al Uzza wal Manat. So they did not commit shirk. Unified, Ikhad, exactly. Okay. Okay, so if I'm saying Ikhad, exactly. So Tawheed was practiced by the Quraysh before Islam. Did you catch it? Let me continue. لبيك اللهم لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك لا شريك لك هذا ما يقال في الحج ويقال في الحج وإحنا قلنا الحج كله مناسك by the way Muhammad took that part لبيك الله لبيك لا شريك لك Muhammad took it and he put it in Islam he even plagiarized it وفي صلح الحديبية اللي عملوا guys let me tell you about the صلح الحديبية حديبية صلح الحديبية uh, Muhammad, you know, he was always attacking the Meccan caravans. Guys, pay attention. Muhammad, do you remember what, how Muhammad was robbing? Do you remember when Muhammad and his army of thugs was robbing the Meccan caravans? Guys, are you still with me? Do you remember the story how Muhammad was always robbing, attacking the caravans of the Meccans? Finally, Muhammad and the Meccans came together. And they said, let us make a truth, right? A truth. Let us make a truth. Let us make a peace treaty. So Muhammad made a peace treaty with the Meccans, his own tribe, right? After he left Mecca, he started to attack them and their caravans. To make a peace between them, the Meccans and Muhammad and his army of thugs, his army of mafia, right? I mean, you are attacking every time you have, you are have a caravan that is coming with trading to Mecca and you are robbing the people, right? With your army. You are a mafia leader. You know, you are robbing. You are a thug. You are a thief. So Meccans were tired of this and they wanted to make peace with Muhammad. So they came with the Hudaybiyah, the reconciliation, the peace treaty of Hudaybiyah. Do you see it? A 10 year peace treaty and when to sign this peace treaty the Meccans told Muhammad to write down let me go back a little so you can follow guys I know it's a lot of meat I know it's a lot of meat to handle but you need to focus all right let me Replay that small part. Uh -huh. In the reconciliation of the Hudaybiyah. The peace treaty with the Quraysh. He wrote on the document, right? The peace document. So Ali, guys, Ali, the cousin of Muhammad, he was the writer of the peace treaty, right? You, this, there is a document, this peace document. Ali is wrote the following. Let me go back. Ali wrote the following, in the name of Allah, the merciful, the merc mercy giving. Do you see it? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. That's what Ali, the cousin of Muhammad wrote. He was the writer of that document. Now watch what happened. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Fawaf the Quraysh, ma fish. So, so the Quraysh did not agree on it. The Quraysh of Mecca did not agree on the first part. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. They said, no, sorry, we do not accept your slogan. We do not accept your creed. We do not accept that you put on the paper, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We don't accept that. That's not our creed, right? That is not our creed. Guys, are you still with me? Give me one of you with me. Are you following? Are you following what is being said, guys? All right. So the Quraysh, the family of Muhammad who rejected him, they did not accept that Muhammad, uh, basically the cousin of Muhammad, who was the writer of that document, he, they did not accept, they rejected the slogan of the Muslims. They rejected what Ali was, what put, what Ali put on the paper, right? 
They said, sorry, we're not going to accept it. They rejected the slogan. Sorry. Look. We don't accept it. Why? Why? We have our own slogan. So the Quraysh say, we have our own slogan. We're not going to accept your slogan. We want you to rewrite it. We want you to rewrite the peace document, the 10 year peace document. Uh -huh. They said, you have to write, right? You have to write it differently. You have to write down لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك Did you catch it? You have to write down لبيك الله لبيك We don't associate partners with you So that's what the Quraysh of Mecca demanded Ali, the cousin of Muhammad to write on the document Else there's, no, there's not going to be a peace treaty between the Meccans and Muhammad this is in Sira Nabawiya by Ibn Hisham Ibn Ishaq. Sira Nabawiya, the early biography by Ibn Hisham Ibn Ishaq. This is the, the earliest source about the life of Muhammad. It's called the Sira and Nabawiya, the biography of prophethood about the life of Muhammad. Do you see guys? So did you catch guys? Did you catch something? Let me change the screens a little. Let me... All right. So basically, in a nutshell, guys, to explain it to you, guys, what is being said basically here is the pagan Meccan Quraysh, which are the tribe family of Muhammad or tribe or family of Muhammad, already practiced Tawheed before Islam. The Meccan Quraysh before Islam used to say, La bayk Allahumma la bayk la sharika lak. We do not associate any partners with you. Do you see it? That was their slogan. That was their creed. So were the Meccan Quraysh before Islam pagans? No, they were not pagans. Bam! So how dare you Muslims? How dare you that you're Islamic leaders today? How dare you to listen to your lies and deception from your Muslim Imams? So when Muslims say before Islam, the Quraysh of Mecca were pagans, don't accept it. Today we are de destroying that. Right? We destroyed that claim. Do you see it? Labbaik Allahumma labbaik la sharika lak. We do not associate any partners with you. That's what the Quraysh used to say. And Muhammad, <laughs> look what happened later. After Muhammad conquered Mecca, he even took this slogan, he stole it, he plagiarized it and adopted it into Islam. So from that moment on, and it's called a talbiya, right? A talabiya. A talabiya is a Muslim prayer invoked by the Muslim pilgrim, pilgrims as a conviction that they intend to perform the Hajj only for the glory of Allah. Muhammad stole the, the slogan of the Meccan Quraysh. He stole their Tawheed. He stole their slogan. What's left? What's left? And you Muslims dare to call the Quraysh pagans while you are stealing even their, their slogan, their creed. Guys, he stole even their creed, right? They're, they're saying, this is their saying, they're men saying, لبيك اللهم لبيك لا شريك لك. Till today, Muslims are practicing the same slogan. Copycat, yeah. The, Muhammad plagiarized what the Quraysh used to say. Yeah. You see the imposter? And Muslims dare to tell you that the, the Quraysh before Islam were pagans. How are they pagans when you are stealing their, their, even their own slogan? How is, how are they pagans? They are saying, La sharika lak, right? La sharika lak. We don't associate any partners with you, Allah, right? La baik Allahumma la baik, la baik la sharika lak. And Muhammad took it and he put it in Islam. So how dare you Muslims to call the Quraysh of Mecca before Islam pagans? They are not pagans. They are not pagans. They worshipped Allah only. Right? Right? 
the Quraysh before Islam, before the Jahiliya, that's how they call it, before the, the pre-Islamic era, they practiced Tawheed, all right? They practiced Tawheed. Muhammad was a pirate. Yeah, he was mafia. He stole their caravans. He robbed their caravans. He killed them. He, oh, he even stole their creed, their slogan, right? Did you catch it? Let me continue play another part from the video. Very interesting video that you are seeing from our dear friend Zechariah Butrus. Watch. Jazeera Arabia. Hatta and the Qurashiyin. وبيقولوا لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك. We don't associate partners with you. See, we have two Arabic speakers. You have me and you have our dear friend Zakari Butrus. We are only quoting what the Muslim sources said. The Quraysh before Muhammad, they used to practice Tawheed and they did not associate partners with Allah, right? لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك. Yes. واللي خدها محمد وحطها. He took it and he placed it. لم يغير فيها شيء. لكن القرآن قال أن القرشيين كانوا مشكون. Did you catch it? He's the 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 host is saying, but the Quran is saying, the Quran is saying that they were associators with Allah, right? They were مشركين, right? مشركون. Look the, the answer. And here comes the answer. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. This is the correction. كان القرشيون الوثنيون دول يؤمنون بالله الواحد الذي لا شريك له. No, مشرك with him, right? They didn't commit shirk. Did you catch it? The Quraysh of Mecca before Muhammad, they did not commit shirk, they did not commit blasphemy, they only had intercessors, right? Intercessors. Like in Islam, Muhammad changed it, uh, the idea. We have in Islam, we have the Quran that will take a flesh body. The Quran itself will take a flesh body. The black stone will take a body that will have a mouth and speak and speak on behalf, intercede on behalf of the Muslims with Allah. So they're nothing but intercessors, middlemen. But the Quraysh did not commit shirk. They were not pagans. Again, speaking from cave, Hira, Hira, Hira. Speaking from cave, Hira, Hira. The Quraysh before, before, Muhammad, Muhammad, before, before, Islam, Islam. They did not commit shirk. Did you catch it? Again, this part. كما مر بنا غير أنهم اتخذوا شفعاء مع الله مثل اللات والعزة ومنات استخدموها كشف كشفيع شفيع only on intercession guys the the three idols اللات العزة والمنات they only interceded they were only middle guys right they were only delivering the prayers of the Meccan Quraysh to Allah. So they practiced Tawheed. They did not worship these idols. They were only nothing but delivery birds. They used to deliver bir uh, do these bird idols, right? Al-Gharaniq, al al only delivered the meal, the prayers of the Quraysh. That's it. Right? That's it. That's it. Allah al Allah al Akbar. Allah al Akbar. al طبعا ما يفوتناش ان النبي محمد لما تمنى ان اهل قريش يبقوا متابعه فجاله الشيطان والقى في على لسانه لما قال ارايتم اللات والعزى ومنات الثالثه الاخرى اللي هي الشفعاء بتوعها تلك الغراني قل علا ان شفعت شفعتهن لا ترتج سي سي ذا ساتانيك فيرسز جايز ذات وي منشند ايرلير ذا ساتانيك فيرسز Let me go back. Have you considered Allah al These are the intercessors, right? Quraniq al-Ula inna shafa'atuhunna la tutrtaja. Izan kant luhum shafa'a. The intercession, yes. Yani kant durhum huwa shafa'a. The role was only to intercede. They were, yeah. 
وتبعته وبعدين جه بالليل لقى الدنيا دربت so guys, والصحاب guys when basically when the, when Muhammad delivered the satanic verses as we showed you from chapter 22 ayah 52 they, when they prostrated they didn't prostrate to the idols they prostrated basically only to Allah right they prostrated to Allah thank you Allah that Muhammad gave us Beautiful stuff about our intercessors. They didn't actually worship Allah al Uzza wal Manat. No, they worshipped Allah, right? They prostrated to Allah, not to the idols. Did you catch it? So they were practicing Tawheed. The Quraysh, the family of Muhammad, practiced Tawheed, and they only worshipped Allah, the supreme moon idol. Still, of course, they are pagans because they are not actually worshiping our God, our only. And living holy God, no, they worship Allah. Of course, they are pagans, but not as the Muslims are calling them pagans. They were not pagans. They were exactly like Muhammad. But what Muhammad did actually, guys, what did Muhammad do? He only removed the intercessors and he added the Quran that is going to intercede. Same like the bird idols, right? And same like the black stone that will intercede too. Muhammad, guys, in a nutshell, let me put it in the chat. Muhammad removed the three uh, the three daughters of Allah and he added Quran plus black stone that will become the new the new intercessors Sorry if I'm writing it wrong in the English. English is not my first language, guys. Arabic is. And Aramaic, by the way, of course. <clears throat> so, as you see, guys, that's what I wanted to explain to you today in a nutshell, right? So, Muhammad copy-pasted the Tawheed that the pagans, the so-called pagans, there's nothing called pagans, right? There, there's nothing called pagans. They were not pagans. They were muwahidun. They practiced tawheed. Muwahidun filah. They practiced tawheed. No, not associating any partners with Allah. Did you catch it, guys? Did you catch it? Abu Alulu, I made it. He brought us to the Galilee. So he said, "Oh, no, no. The Shaitan went on the Galilee. It was Jibril Galilee. Look, look what Muhammad is saying." What did you do, Muhammad? What did you do? No, 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 it was Satan. He was blaming Satan. Gabriel Gali. Gabriel came. Did you catch it? 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 Where is the protection? Where is the protection from Allah? Where is Jibreel? After the damage has been done? Jibreel comes and starts to speak Muhammad. Muhammad, what have you done? You gave the satanic verses that I did not give to you. It was Satan. It wasn't me. Uh-oh. 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 Any Muslim who dares to say that the satanic verses are a fabrication, I challenge you. Call me. Call me, ya, 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 ya. Akhi. Where is Fifi? Where is Mimi? Where is Lily when you need them? Call me. I'm, we are live. Where are the Muslims, man? Muhammad did huge poo poo. Exactly, Said. Muhammad did huge poo poo. And he gave, he gave, he blamed Satan. I mean, wh why are you not blaming Allah for not protecting you? Where is the protection from Allah? Allah. Allah said in the Quran, he, he is going to protect his slaves from Satan. Where is the protection for the best example? I mean, Muhammad, when you ask Muslims, who is Muhammad? They say he's the best example. He is the best human. I mean, Allah, why are you not protecting Muhammad, the best human, the so-called best human in Islam from Satan? You're not protecting him from the satanic virus, from the coronavirus. Why are you not protecting Muhammad from the coronavirus? Allah was having a nice cup of tea with Jibreel, brother. Allah just had some nice food, some delicious food, right? And he, his stomach was full and he forgot to protect Muhammad. He was having a, a, a test, right? a, a rest. A rest.
نرجع إلى وحدانية الله فإذا التوحيد كان موجود Most, do you see it, guys? So monotheism was already there before Islam, right? The Quraysh already practiced Tawheed, monotheism. The Quraysh They believed in only in one God, Allah, the supreme one idol, right? بالضبط يعني اللي كانت موجودة في هذا الوقت والمفروض أنها You have to do research, like we do, guys. That's it, Muslims. You need to do your own research. If you think we're lying to you, go study your own Islamic sources. Now, if there are Christians, guys, if there are Christians, you, we are allowing you to call. Now, Christians can also call us. If you want to call us live, Christians, maybe Sister Kay or maybe Sister Vanessa, the regular callers, anyone, you are allowed to call us live, right? You are allowed to call us live. Hussein Zamani, you are such a donkey. You are such a donkey. You don't even accept your own Quran. Are you going to call, call the Quran daif? It's in front of you. The ayah is in front of you. You need tafsir for a very crystal clear ayah. <laughs> We already read it five times at least, right? Is the Quran a Sunni source? Abdul, Abdul, Abdul. Yeah, donkey. Is the, is the Quran a Sunni source? Do you, do, are you rejecting your Quran? It's in your Quran. And all the noble messengers of Allah, all the noble prophets and messengers, whom Allah sent, whom we sent before you, it occurred with all of them, all of them, except you, Muhammad, that whenever they recited, including you, Muhammad, the message of Allah, Satan, do you see it? Satan comes in between, includes a bit from his own satanic speech, do you see it? In their intercession to the people, inter-recitation to the people. Iqra, 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 read, donkey, read. Guys, I know a very smart guy who, who, who always says, and I quote, a donkey will never become a horse. I forgot who that guy was man who was that guy man who, who, who always says a donkey will never become a horse who is that guy i forgot his name man who? i forgot i forgot his name um hussein zamani you're calling me a dog but your the last name of your prophet was kilab muhammad His real name was Qatham ibn Kilab. So when you're going to call me a donkey, it go, always go back to your prophet. Muhammad ibn Kilab. That was his last name. Are you making fun of a dog while your prophet's last name is dogs? Muhammad's real name is Qatham ibn Kilab. Now go ask prophet Google what Kilab means. It's the plural of Kelb. Kelb is dog. Kilab is plural, dogs. So you just call me a dog. Are you trying to make fun of your own prophet? Are you making fun of your own prophet, brother? Congratulations, man. Congratulations. You're doing good, man. You're doing good. You're doing very good, brother. You're doing very good, brother. Everything you say will use, be used against your prophet in the court of law. Bam. Everything you say will be used against your prophet in the court of law. You're calling me a dog? It goes back to your prophet. And not only that, Muhammad married the wife of his own adopted son Zainab. Zainab's last name is Zainab bin Tajash. Zainab, the daughter of the donkey. So a dog, your prophet the dog, boy, your prophet the dog married His wife, the daughter of the donkey. So the dog married the donkey, right? Everything you say will be used against your prophet in the court of law. The dog, your prophet, married the donkey. Congratulations, man. Congratulations. Beautiful Islam, brother. This is the beautiful Islam. This is the beauty of the prophet of Islam, brother. A dog marrying a donkey. Wow. So guys, as you see, we can conclude. The final conclusion is 
the pre-Islamic Meccans, the own tribe of Muhammad, the family of Muhammad were monotheists. They were not pagans. They worshipped Allah and Allah alone. Yes, they had intercessors, but they did not worship them. They did not worship Allah al Uzza wal Manat. They only worshipped Allah, right? And we proved it today to you guys, right? Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. That's what their slogan used to say, right? Labbaik Allahumma labbaik la sharik lak. Right? They were actually glorifying Allah, right? They were glorifying Allah and they said, we don't associate partners with you. We don't associate any partners with you. So the conclusion again is, the pagans, the so-called pagans that Muslims call them pagans, they were not pagans. You see it? Yes, in our eyes, us, us Christians, of course they are pagans. Because we don't believe in Allah, we reject Allah, the moon idol. But in the eyes of Muslims, they are not pagans. Yeah, the Abdul must be really proud now, right? Muslims who are, who, who are witnessing today's live show must be proud about their Muslim leaders who are always lying to them. How many Muslims know that the Quraysh before Islam did not practice shirk? They were, they were muwahidun fillah. They were practicing tawheed, unification, right? Which they claim to call, to, <laughs> they call it oneness, right? It's not oneness, but let it go. Right. Yeah, he got destroyed. You see, guys, Mr. Noli, you see? He called me a dog, but it goes back to his own prophet. This guy is a coward. He will never call me. He's a wannabe Arab. He always insults his own prophet. He, he thinks that the word Arab is an insult. He always calls me an Arab, sounding it as it is an insult. But his own prophet was an Arab. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Do you have any colors, guys? Let's see if we can accept calls. Uh, let me call John back because he was the first caller. John, I'm calling you back. John, are you there, my friend? John? Opa, sorry. Yeah, hello. You're live on air, John. Can you hear me? How are you doing, brother? Hey, welcome. You're live on air, my friend. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. I just want to ask you something. I get the book of Christian Prince for books, the section of Allah and others. Yes, that's good. I want to contact to him. I call him just uh, maybe one week, but he don't answer. He's not online. Yeah, it's if difficult. It's difficult him. to reach Christian Prince. I have that issue sometimes too, my friend. But he he has a lot of subscribers. He had a lot of viewers. So imagine if Christian Prince would accept all the calls. That's very difficult, my friend. So I know that's yeah. very difficult, but I just want to ask him if if we can uh, translate the book of Christian Prince to Eritrean language. Yes, yes, you can. Uh, what I understood from our dear friend, uh, Christian Prince, uh, amazing brother. You know, I really uh, respect this yeah. brother. He's a real dear brother of mine. Uh, Christian Prince always says to, to his audience, you can translate his book, but don't sell it. If you're going to sell it, that's not allowed. But if you want to okay. translate it and use yeah. it, use it to, for benefit, yeah. you know, for the truth, he says it's yeah. okay, but don't sell. If you're going to sell, then you have a problem. You understand? That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, we, we, we just get it freely. You can yeah. buy. Same for my videos, my friend. If you like our videos, my videos, download yeah. them, download them, right? You can translate yeah. them, but don't do selling, okay? Because we have the copyright. Uh, again, I, I don't yeah. have a, a YouTube account. So everyone can download, everyone can translate, but don't sell. Because yeah. everything is for free, so keep it free. Don't don't benefit so by money, okay, guys? Yeah, thank you. I, I just yeah. have one question. Either. Go ahead, my When friend. I can get the, the, the topic that says the 16th privilege of uh, Muhammad. Sorry? Oh, uh, you mean uh, Al Qurtabi Tafsir for uh, chapter 33, Ayah 50? That's that one you mean? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see if I can find it for you. Uh, unfortunately, our admin, Phil Herrera, normally he has all the links, but let me see if I uh, can find it for you. Can, are you able to make screenshots, my friend? Is it yeah. Possible? Okay. Let's see if uh, let I can put it on the screen. Okay. 
Uh, just a second. Bear with me, okay? I have so many links. Sometimes I even yeah. lose myself in all the stuff that I have. I <laughs> okay, yeah. let, me, let me put it on the screen. Here's it's on. Do you see the screen? Do you see the screen? Do you see the screen? Yeah, I'm online. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Muhammad had 16 privileges, right? 16, not one, not two, but 16. And the number yeah. 10, Al Asher. Do you see the highlighted one? Yeah. Okay. This. Is, you, please make a screenshot. Make a screenshot first. Take a snapshot. This is al Tafsir al Qurtubi for chapter 33, ayah 50. Chap chapter thir 33, ayah 50 by al Qurtubi. And it says, okay. this, it says in the 10th privilege, al Asher. Asher means in Arabic 10th. Yeah, I know Arabic, yeah. Oh, you can. Okay. Can you read it? You can read it if you like. Al Asher. Yeah, read it, please. Wait. Okay. أقرأها من عندك أقرأها من عندك. Okay. العاشر إذ وقع بصره على امرأة واجب على زوجها طلاقها وحل له نكاحها. Meaning translation guys, the privilege for Muhammad and only for Muhammad if he looks at a married woman, mm -hmm. right? That's what it says, right? You can confirm you're an Arabic yeah. speaker, right? If Muhammad looks at at a married woman, she's married, mm -hmm. right? She has a husband. Yeah. Her husband, yeah. her Muslim husband, this is talking about Muslims. Yeah. Her Muslim husband must divorce her so can so Muhammad can F her, not marry her, nikah, nikahuha, right? So <laughs> to have sexual intercourse with her, Muhammad becomes legal for him, halal, right? It becomes yeah. halal. That's halal, you can confirm, right? Did I translate it correctly? I Can you confirm it for us? I will send it later to you. Okay, is that okay? Okay, okay. 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 Good, good. You heard it, guys. I mean, maybe yeah. Rob Christian is lying, but we, we here we have an Arabic speaker who confirmed that the privilege of Muhammad is the tenth one, Al Asher. There are sixteen. The tenth one is if Muhammad looks at your woman, you as a Muslim must divorce your woman, and Muhammad can start to f her, f her brother. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's that's the Habibi, that, al no problem, my friend. Thank you for calling. God bless. Bye 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 bye. Mm. Wow, wow. Sixteen privileges for Muhammad. What a filthy privilege, someone. Peter M, are you are you insulting the Prophet of Islam, man? I mean, I mean, Allah, Allah gave him this privilege. Allah says to Muhammad, when you are flirting when you look look at a Muslim woman she is married you are flirting with her you want her you you know like the daughter like your own daughter in law Zainab right he, Muhammad goes guys here comes the story of Zainab and Zaid his adopted son Muhammad goes to the house of his son guys pay attention focus with me give me one of you with me Muhammad goes to see his son. His son is not at home. Knock, knock. Nobody is opening. Muhammad goes in. I mean, Muhammad, question. Your son is not at home. You know he's not at home. Why are you going inside? So anyway, Muhammad goes inside. What does he see? What does he find? Zainab bint Jahsh, right? Zainab, the daughter of the donkey. <laughs> he sees her naked body. What does Muhammad say? Subhan muqallib al qulub. What what does that mean? Glory to Allah who turns hearts, make my heart bing bing, bing bing, bing bing. So Muhammad's heart starts, you know, <clears throat> for Zainab, and he start to flirt with the woman, the wife of his own adopted son. And as you see, according to the Tafsir of Al Qurtubi for chapter thirty three, ayah fifty. Only Muhammad and only Muhammad has the privilege 
to fall in love with married women and if he falls in love with a married woman her husband must immediately divorce her so that Muhammad can F her that means it becomes legal for him for who for Muhammad to F her to have sexual intercourse with her yeah, a racing heart exactly Grace Roberts Muhammad his heart starts to you know come out of his chest brother and he blames Allah he blames Allah for it Subhan Muqallib al qulub glory to Allah who is turning my heart for the naked body of my own daughter-in-law wow what a beautiful story a true love story guys yeah do we have any other callers let's see I missed another call let me call this guy back Alexander I'm calling you yeah hello yeah hello welcome you're live on air hi Rob hi hi how are welcome. you I'm good my friend how about you yeah it's okay it's okay uh, I have a question uh, yes. because that Shia Shia guy Hussein Zalamami or, or yeah, yeah, his the Hussein, name I don't know yes yeah the Hussein Hussein uh, uh, what was his name Hussein something yeah Yes. Yeah. Uh, why do the Shia Muslims discuss and defend the Uthman Quran? <coughs> it's the Quran of Uthman. Yeah. So that that means it's against the Shia. Yeah, exactly. But they but they defend the Quran and they want Shia tafsir for a Sunni Quran. <laughs> That's I, a good I, one, I, guys. Did you I, hear I, what this gentleman said? That's a very good one. Can you repeat what I, you said? I, Please repeat what uh, you said. Please. The, the Shia, the Shia Muslims want a Shia tafsir for a Sunni Quran. That's crazy. That's madness. That's that's a very good point, my friend. I have to agree with you exactly. And I, I thought, I thought the Shia Quran is with Mahdi, and uh, yeah. this, the real Quran, the Shia believes the real Quran is with the Mahdi. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I don't understand. This guy signs an hour or two hour. They or try, they type a uh, tafsir, Shia tafsir, Shia tafsir. He defends a Sunni Quran. He defends the Uthman Quran. Yeah, a disaster, right? That's, that's a disaster, that's, don't that's, you think? That's that's unbelievable. That's yeah. that's more than a disaster. That's uh, exactly very that's good point. Stu very stupid, very good point. Stu stupidity in a new dimension that's crazy that's that is that is uh beyond stupidity right beyond yes that's far 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 beyond <laughs> what can i say my my friend no, but, you know uh, this is the amazing person... knowledge this is the amazing logic of the Shia of Muslim. yellow shoes yes <laughs> yellow shoes <laughs> no my question is is it true that the shia quran in the shia belief is with madi yeah, well, they, uh, yeah, the Quran is yeah, not yeah. here. Basically, uh, there there are sh many Shia. Uh, you know, there are even Shia scholars. They claim that the Quran that they have today, right? They claim that the Quran that they, that you know, let's say the Hafs Quran, for example, right? The Quran, this recitation mm -hmm. of Hafs that yes. mo that more than ninety percent of Muslims in the Islamic world use. They claim yes, yes. that it's a lot of stuff that is in it is. Uh, corrupted and mm -hmm. when Imam Mahdi comes right their final Imam if they call him Imam Mahdi he will bring the correct Quran with him so many Shia believe that the Quran as it is now let's say the Quran that he we have here on the screen they say that this Quran it has fabrications corruption in it that's what they believe many of them mm -hmm. So you're so correct. That, yeah. that, that, mean, that means the Shia Quran must be a total different version of the today's Quran. Yeah, they will, basically the Imam Mahdi will bring the Quran that Allah has on his heavenly tablets, right? Al mm -hmm. Luh al Mahfuz, they call it Luh al Mahfuz, which means the tablet in, in, in Allah's possession in heaven, right? He will yes. bring it. He will bring it again. That's what you oh, believe. Okay. Shia, okay. Shia is so, are really, really funny, funny, very funny sect. No, I, I have a, a friend uh, as a friend. Yeah. I know him. He is a Shia, and uh, yeah. almost when we when we talk about Islam, uh, yeah. I hear stories. But bro, what do you believe? What do you, what do you believe about the yellow shoes? Uh, I mean, you are convinced, right? Come on. 
if you yeah, if you I, wear black shoes or maybe you wear blue shoes uh i mean your penis is not going to work my friend it's it's, it's on the screen don't say rob christian is lying no 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 i wear <laughs> I, i wear i wear i wear red shoes i don't know what is the <laughs> What is the, 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 the effect on the, sorry, sorry for my language, what, what is the effect on the penis for, for red shoes? I, well, I need, we need to I need ask, to, yeah, we need to I ask need to Hussein, ask right? Scholar, yes. we have, uh, Hussein, we have, uh, yes, yeah, Hussein can help us. Yeah, Hussein can help us, right? I mean, really, if you don't wear yellow shoes, I mean, it's, it's on the screen. Wear the yellow shoes, don't wear black shoes, because your penis will stop working, right? Your eyes will stop working. And you will become depressed. So make sure to always wear yellow shoes, brother. This is authentic Shia hadith. No Shia that's can reject That's that's crazy. That's that's <laughs> that's madness. No, I I just want to say it's. Uh, I think it's it's crazy for this. I mean, Shia and you guy. heard him. You heard him challenging me, right? He challenged me before I started my live show in the live chat. Right, he say he was saying in the chat, show me any uh, Islamic Shia source. All the Shia sources I accept. I, he, he made a huge challenge, bro. And when I read yes, it, I was, yes, yes, right, yes. I accept maybe, your maybe, challenge, maybe, and I'm maybe, going to put it in your face, right? <laughs> maybe he is the Mahdi. We don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe he is. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, he's calling me names. You know, everything he he said about, to me. We use it against his prophet. He called me a dog. We know the last name of Muhammad is Kilab. He is the son of, of the of the of the, of Khadija was a donkey. No, no, not Khadija. Or, Zainab. Zainab. Uh, Zainab. 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 From Zainab was don donkey. The One name. of his yes. wives. Yeah, he stole that wife from his son, and she became his wife. Exactly. Yeah. Do you no, want to say something else, my friend? No, you want to share? I, Uh, God bless uh, the audience, the Thank people you, in the chat, friend. your subscribers. Thank you. God bless you and your family and uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for calling, my friend. Bye-bye. God bless you. Bye-bye. That was an amazing call. Let's see if we have more callers, guys. Uh, Jay, Jay, she wants to call or he wants to call. Let me call this on his gentleman. Jay, I'm calling you, my friend. Hello. Welcome. You're live on air, my friend. Go ahead. Oh, hello. Is this Rob? Hello. Welcome. Yes. Welcome. Go Hi. Ahead. How's it going? I'm good. Thank you. How about you? Hope you're okay. Good. Good. Doing okay. Doing well, brother. Thank you so much. Um, I had a quick question. Um, I, I was talking with a few Muslims the other day, and something kind of came yes. to the forefront of my mind. Um, and we were talking. You were talking about the satanic verses today. Yes. And I remember mentioned that. Um, Muhammad, if he had ever inserted false verses that um, Allah would cut his aorta and later yes. Aisha had quoted and saying that if, you know, that basically that's exactly how he died, saying that his aorta was being cut. Exactly. And yeah. that he was sitting there dying for a long period of time, two or three years. And, you know, Muhammad, you know, oddly enough, Allah never sought to heal him or fix him. And apparently black current and camel urine didn't fix whatever that was. So <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, anyway, funny, yeah. Yeah. Aside from that, <laughs> um, the thing I wanted to ask you is is what I was kind of seeing is it almost seems like Allah protected the satanic verses. Yeah. And just if you'll follow me for a second, you know, Allah said that he would protect the Quran, that it's a good book. Yes. Okay. So if there's anything that wasn't protected, it probably wasn't Quran. Yes. So, yes. like, and I'm just trying to follow the Muslim logic here. Yeah. So, so if, if Allah didn't protect it, Yeah. That means that it probably wasn't going to survive. And, you know, Uthman destroyed a bunch of texts. Of Abu course. Bakr yeah, Uthman destroyed, destroyed six of the seven Ahruf, right? Six of the ways right. of recite. So he destroyed six and he kept only one. Exactly. Right. And, and yeah. what, what, what did it say? They, they were able to keep the fires burning for six months just yeah. from the texts or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, Uthman burned a bunch. Malik burned a bunch. I think uh, Jason Al-Hajjaj. Al-Hajjaj. Well, many, 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 many people destroyed the Quran. Many, many, many. Even, so, but yeah, it, even in 1924, when Al Azhar University, right, those imams yeah, in Egypt, you, yeah, they, you, they, they, they they changed they it, the right? Yeah, they sink in the Nile, right? Yeah, they yes, sink and you, they brother. sink the old Qurans in the Nile, right? They throw them in the Nile like garbage, exactly. Thank you, brother. Thank yeah. you, brother. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. don't you find it a little odd that that through all of those 
blotting out yeah. the satanic verse survived. Yeah. Well, we should thank Allah for that, right? <laughs> that we now can see still in the Quran. I mean, and I, you see, you, you saw this uh, Hussein or whatever well, his name. Well, give me tafsir. Give, give me, give me Shia tafsir. I mean, it's in front of you. You want Shia tafsir? Give me, give me any Shia tafsir, right? I don't care. I will put it on the screen. But we, we go, we went through some, and not one is disagreeing with it, right? And it's on the screen. It clearly says, and all the noble messengers or prophets whom we sent, Allah is saying, before you, it occurred with all of them. So here Muhammad starts to attack all the prophets. Can you imagine? He's insulting Abraham. He's insulting Moses, right? That whenever they recited the words of Allah, the message of Allah, Satan comes in always in between. This naughty Satan, man. He's so powerful in Islam. Satan included a bit, the satanic verses, from his own speech in their recitation to the people. I mean, you need to see for this. It's crystal clear, right? <laughs> Amen, brother. Yeah. Amen. So I just thought it was interesting that yeah. it would seem that it exactly. seems like Allah protected the satanic verses by yeah. their own logic. Exactly. Find that basically in a nutshell. I, yeah. Who, who other than Satan would protect the satanic verses? Yeah. Who other who other than Satan would inspire Muhammad to say that uh, devils course, command him for good? Of course, of course. Just, uh, no, who, who else? Who else? God, our God of the Bible does not speak such nonsense. Uh, who, who believes this? God nonsense? forbid! It's an insult for God, you know, to insult all the prophets. I mean, Muhammad is insulting, man. He's insulting all the prophets, right? He's claiming that all yeah. the prophets got uh, satanic re revelation from Satan, right? Right. Can you imagine how can Muslims, Muslims think with me if you're watching and listening, Muslims, I'm talking to the Muslims. Do you really believe that all the prophets fell for the satanic verses of Satan? That's what the Quran says. That's what chapter 2, Ayah 52 is saying. And all the noble messengers and the prophets whom we sent before you, it occurred with all of them that Satan put his own words in it. Can you imagine? He's insulting Moses. He's insulting Abraham. He's insulting all Jacob, all of them. Can you imagine, bro? What kind of insult this is? Uh, Go well, but then me. why why is he, why is he telling the Jews to bring the Torah and swearing on a book that might have satanic verses in it? Well, I don't know. You tell me, man. <laughs> because, <laughs> because I don't I, I, I don't think I don't think Muhammad cares if he was serving. No, Satan. he was I, I he think. was having jokes, man. He was. Playing everyone, yeah, no, but the Jews no. were too smart, right? The Jews were too smart. Yeah, the, the Christians, and the Christians yeah, knew. They, they knew. knew. They yeah, knew. they didn't accept him. He he tried to appeal to the pagans by by appealing to their pagan gods. Exactly. Then he tried to appeal to the Jews by telling them they didn't get it right. Then he tried to appeal to the Christians. Yeah. No one would accept him. No one. No one would accept. Yeah. Do you remember that debate with with the with the Christians of Najran? They challenged him for a debate. Right, he said, I don't have the answer right now. It's in the Quran, right? I don't have the answer. Come back later. What does he do? He comes later, right? He comes later and he claims that he gets the event. He says, Bring your daughters, bring your children, and that's it. Where's the debate? Where's the debate, man? They are challenging you, the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad, the, the Christians of Najran are challenging you for a debate. Why are you not accepting the debate? Why are you saying to them, Bring your children, bring your animals, bring your wives, bring your daughters? I mean, come on, are you going to have a party or are you going to have a debate? And the debate never took he place. Knew, never the debate. Knew, he, knew only, he knew we could only win a debate against children and animals. That, <laughs> that's why he's asking him to bring them. And where's the debate, my friend? They are challenging you for a debate. They are coming from Najran. They are challenging you for a debate. Where is the debate? When is the debate going to happen? No, never. <laughs> never. It never happened. He said, he only, his answer was, bring your children, bring your wives, and we're going to have a party. Debate? There's no debate. Amazing. God bless you, brother. Thank you, you know, for I, calling, I, my friend. I, that was amazing. Thank you. Ministry. Thank you so much. <laughs> I, am, I am teaching myself Arabic, or at least trying to. I downloaded an app. And, That's cool. And uh, I'm going yeah. through it recently. That's cool. Because I'm... Uh, you know what? I know there's thousands and thousands and thousands of tafsirs that yeah. most of the Muslims don't even know what they say and can't even read, and I'm desperate to crack into some of them. No problem, man. Knowledge is key, bro. The knowledge is key. Hey. Always good. Amen. God, God bless you, brother, in your ministry. I hope Thank you have you. a great day. Thank you so much for taking the time. I appreciate it, my friend. God bless you, too. Thank you for calling. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We have very amazing calls, guys, today. God is good, man. Really, you Christians are smart, man. You Christians are amazing me, man. With your, 
I mean, if Muslims, if only Muslims would think like you, Christians, we would have really a peaceful, peaceful community on YouTube. But it is what it is. Muslims don't dare to ask questions, right? Remember the ayah, chapter 5, ayah 101? All you who believe, ask not about things which if may plain to you, may cause you to trouble, may cause you to leave Islam. Don't ask, right? I mean, come on, man. Come on. Really, Muslims? Don't ask. Why not? Because Satan doesn't like, I mean, Allah doesn't like questions. Muhammad doesn't like to be questioned. Don't ask. All right. Do you have other callers? Let's see, guys. Dear Sister Kai, are you there? You want to call, sister? Are you there? Not sure if she wants to call to be called. Let me try to call the, our sister. Not sure if she's still active. I don't think she's. Active. Hey, Sister Kai, are you there? Yes, I am. Hey, yeah, how are you, Sister? God bless I'm you. Good, thank you. I've been laughing and laughing listening to you. Why? What's so funny, sister? Come on, man. There's well, I'm going to have to, <laughs> even though I'm um, female, I'm yeah. going to have to look through my wardrobe, double check for yellow shoes. I don't think I have any. <laughs> so I'm always wearing black. Yeah. Um, I have some silver um, sneakers. That's I don't funny. Know That's funny. Them, but yeah, <laughs> okay. the black ones. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? It's heartbreaking. Uh, yeah, it's the hard. guy was challenging me to bring any Shia, <laughs> any Shia source. All of it is perfect. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about yellow flip flops? Yeah. Yellow, um, so yeah, I think it's just going to have. It is summer. It's it's better in the summertime to be bright and breezy. <laughs> But so, so Sister Kay, like, what would you think yeah. about our uh, topic of today, right? You you saw the topic, and yes, uh, I saw that. Yeah, didn't we I prove, think didn't we prove that actually the Muslims have been always lying they to had us? Yeah, well, they had Tawhid before. Yeah, exactly, um, Muhammad. So they used and, to and call them pagans, right? Yeah, yeah. they yes. always say Let's they are pagans, but they're not pagans. Was, they're not pagans. Yeah, his, yeah. But even his father was dead um, long, long, long yeah. before he was born. So. You know, we, we, you can't even trust his his yeah. uh, lineage, let alone his the traditions of those people before. Yeah. And because he went around um, like a chameleon, like yeah. trying to uh, ingratiate. When he was weaker, he yeah. wanted to be everybody's friend and include their gods and their gods and the cranes and the everybody was welcome to the party. Yeah. And then when he became strong, then you show no mercy and then exactly. there's this compulsion yeah. in religion and yeah, yeah, Christians yeah. are the worst exactly. of all creatures, yeah. etc. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 It's a false gospel and it's a false, there's a literally a false Jesus in there. Yeah. There's um, all of the things we're warned about in the new Testament. There they are. Yep. It's just plain for everybody to see. Yeah. Guys, Please. by the way, I want what I want to add also, uh, our dear sister Kai, she has a YouTube channel. Please subscribe to her YouTube channel. She is doing amazing work. And Lord willing, we will have also a couple videos for, with our dear sister. We're going to uh, have some nice recordings together. Not sure when, you know, you know, sister, uh, we need to, you know, pick a date and Lord willing, it will turn out to be really, really good work. I think it's going to be funny. Yeah, I've got a feeling. For sure, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I will be wearing my yellow shoes. At yeah, me too, me too. You, <laughs> know, you never know. <laughs> Just honor of the occasion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I found some more um, Speakers Corner videos, um, mm -hmm. thank goodness, because mm -hmm. this lockdown is going to be taking, I yeah. think, a long time. So... <laughs> yeah, I found some more to put up and then okay. I'm going to be interviewing some other Christians, you and Jay Smith again and Paperboy sure, and sure. Brother Ben, lots of people. Fun, so, fun stuff. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, for sure. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so uh, Lord willing, we will have a lot of amazing, amazing time together uh, this year. Uh, you know, we are all in lockdown, you know, we have to stay safe, but we have the time now to uh, produce amazing videos, Lord willingly. For so. sure. And now is the time not only yeah. for YouTubers to produce content, but it's the time that everyone 
hopefully has access if they've got access to youtube they've got access to the bible yeah. they've got access to bibles with commentaries um on things like uh you know bible hub or something like that so you can look at what other people like a tafsir kind of but not really because we invented it yeah. so yeah you can look at what um other christian scholars think about those verses because i know that muslims have difficulty um, like today I was looking at a debate between, you know, people who thought that when God was talking about Israel and Judah, that they were his girlfriends mm -hmm. because Yahweh says they are adulterous and they're unfaithful. The Muslim really thought it meant that they were ladies called Judah and Israel. So it's, uh, it's best that Christians are armed with even the simplest answers because it all just, yeah, it's, it's, God is not the God of confusion. Exactly. Um, God forbid. It have it's an insult. Just like us. It's an insult for God. It's, yeah. Islam for itself sure. is an insult for our holy God. Yeah, it's antichrist yeah, for sure. For sure, sister. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for calling, right, my well, friend. Take care. Thank Make you. sure you have a honey drink after. You <laughs> yeah, you know. It's, for hours. I'm a big you know. talker, but you're just a professional. <laughs> Well done. <laughs> no, sister, you're Thanks. you're to, for me. You're a lioness. I mean, you you go uh, on speaker's corner, guys. Our yeah. sister here goes on speaker's corner, and she is debating face to face with Muslims, right? So for me, I've said it before. You're a lioness, like our sister Hatun. I really respect what you do, yeah. really, from the heart. Thank you. thank you very much, and and we've got lots of love for you as well. Thank you. So. So, thank you, dear sister. God bless you. All right. God bless you. God bless everybody in the chat. Amen. Bye. Right. Take care. See you. Take care, sister. Right. Bye bye. See bye you bye. soon. Bye bye. Ciao. Bye bye. I think. Do we have more callers, guys? Can we accept more calls? <clears throat> guys, have you seen the video of uh, our brother David Wood? He challenged the Muslim community, all the Muslims. David Wood, I saw his video today, he uploaded before. He challenged all the Muslims, provide me one Quranic ayah that says the gospel is corrupted and he will take his shahada. Is that a good challenge, guys? David Wood, live on his YouTube channel. And I'm not sure if it's live, if it, no, it was not live. He uploaded a video. He said, and I quote, if you can show me one Quranic ayah from the Quran, Quranic ayah, or just one, not ten. If you can show me one ayah from the Quran where it says the gospel is corrupted, I will take my shahada. And guys, I will say to life on air, at least this is life on air. If any Muslim can show me one ayah from the Quran that says, listen carefully Muslims. If you can show me one ayah from the Quran that says the gospel is corrupted, I will take my shahada together with David Wood too. It's recorded guys, right? It's recorded. I mean, you just heard it, right? Just one, not ten. Just one. Show me one ayah, Muslims, where it says that the gospel is corrupted in your Quran and I will take my shahada together with David Wood. Is that a good challenge, guys? Someone says it's a great challenge. Well, it's recorded. I cannot delete it. So we have a double challenge. Challenge from David Wood. Challenge from Rob Christian. Bam. It's recorded, guys. I cannot take it back. It's Muslims, you heard it. You heard David Wood. Are you going to accept the challenge? Please do. So we can have some laughs. Just one eye, guys. One. Not ten. One. 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 <laughs> Guys, you know what funny is? You know what's funny? Christians always accept challenges of Muslims. Why Muslims don't accept our challenges? Huh? The Shia boy, he said, provide one Shia hadith that refutes Shia. Well, here you go. I mean, you must be a donkey, and I'm not insulting any real donkeys. You must be a donkey if you believe that black shoes might cause your a penis not not to work your penis will stop working if you wear black shoes you must be a donkey son of a donkey if you believe this is true that your eyes will stop working and you will get depression 
if you wear yellow shoes, brother, brother, if you wear yellow shoes, then your penis will become strong, brother, like a like a bull, <laughs> like a bull, right? And your vision will be sharpened. You will, you don't even need glasses, brother, and uh, depression will go away, brother. Yellow shoes, brother. I mean, you must be, I mean, come on, guys, this, she, uh, something else, bro, bro, you know, I rest my case, brother, guys, I think we don't have any more callers, or do we have a call, okay, we have a call, I think, two calls, wow, let me call this uh, brother back, brother Jacob, sorry, I missed your call, let me call him back, brother Jacob, Hello, hello, bro. hello, brother. You're live on air. Go ahead. Hey, hey brother Rob. Hey, um, my friend. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Was just listening in to today's topic, and I see that you was uh talking about monotheism. I was driving. I caught um yeah. some of what you were discussing. Did you like it? But, bro? Um, Did you like it? Yes, yes. I, I always enjoy. It. I, I was just listening. To the show. I, I listened to the person before again. He made a good point about. Yeah. Her, did how, you hear? Did you hear my challenge to the to the Muslims? Did you hear it? No. No. What was your challenge? Well, I I mentioned David Wood today uploaded a video on YouTube, and he said to all the Muslims, if you can give me one ayah from the Quran that says that the gospel is corrupted, I will take my shahada, and. I said, I repeated too, after David Wood, if you can show me one ayah from the Quran that says that the gospel is corrupted, I will take my shahada together with David too. Well, wow. so, Sounds good, right? It sounds very good. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I was a Muslim, I would jump on it, you know? <laughs> yeah, man, come on. I mean, we're talking about two very, you know, known persons, right? Yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah, but I, I, have, wanted to I have thousands of subscribers. David Wood has even more subscribers than I do, so you, gotta, you, know, gotta, you know. So you will, you, you, you know. Imagine, guys. Imagine if they can refute us, then we both of us can close their YouTube channel. I mean, come on, accept our challenge, right? Right. Yeah. That's cool. Someone in the chat says, "Sounds very good, man. It's recorded, man." <laughs> Go yeah. ahead, bro. What do you want to say? Yeah, Go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Um. I see that your topic is um, monotheism and um, oh yeah, the guy who called in before me, I wanted to say too that that's a very good point he made. I think people need to, when people call in, like it's, it's more than laughter time. It's time to absorb what these people are really saying. Even you, Rob Christian, because we don't know how long we're going to have this YouTube up. Yeah, all of this. You never know, know, right? So this is why we always say download our videos. Download yeah. our videos. You never know what YouTube might decide, right? Yeah, this is you know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, I see that you was talking about monotheism, and yeah. that's one of the bragging points that um Muslims always talk about, like, oh, Islam is about monotheism, but yeah. I have they they make it seem like that monotheism is the most important aspect of yeah. Islam. Yeah. But I got I got news for them, and if you could pull up this hadith I'm about to tell you. Uh, so okay. you can show it everybody. It's a Sunni hadith, I, I think, right? Yeah. What does it say? Uh, what does the hadith say so I can look it up? Okay, um, you can type in these words. Um, Abdullah ibn Amir reported that a man said that the messenger of Allah, he asked the messenger of Allah, which aspect of Islam is best? So if you type that in the search box, it should pop up. Let's see. Which aspect of Islam is best? He replied. If you put that in there, it should pop up. Mm, let's see. Go to dot com. Uh, aspect. Which aspect of Islam is best? Question mark. He replied. <clears throat> mm, let's see. Uh, which deed is the best? Is that one? No, it's, it says Abdullah. It should say Abdullah ibn Amir. I get a lot of uh, hadith, my friend. If you, if, you say. This, man, if, you, if you put feeding people and greeting those you know, if you put that in the um, search, that should okay. come up. It should come up. Feeding, okay, feeding. Feeding people and greeting those you know. It should come up. Okay, I think I got it. 
just a Abdul second. Ibn yeah, I uh, I think I found it. Would you read it, please? So yes, sure. So. Uh, it's on the screen. Uh, it's a Sahih Hadith, right? Al Adab Al Mufrad Hadith number ten thirteen. Sahih. Don't say it's daif. Abdullah ibn Amr reported that the man said, Messenger of Allah, which aspect of Islam is best? So the Sahabi is asking Muhammad, right? <coughs> which aspect of Islam is best? Muhammad replied, feeding people and greeting those you know and those you do not know. All right, go ahead, my friend. So my, my point is, they always bragging about monotheism like it's the greatest thing about Islam, but their own prophet said that the greatest thing, the greatest aspect of it is feeding people yeah. and greeting people who you don't know. Yeah. And then the second part proves that Muhammad is a hypocrite because Why? he said he said greeting people that you don't know. Yeah. But there is another hadith where he says that you do not initiate the greeting. <laughs> <laughs> that one, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a contradiction. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. a big contradiction. Exactly. Yeah, greet people who you don't know. It's a contradiction. Yeah, and, and force them. Not only don't greet them first, also yeah. force them to the narrowest of the road, which is actually the dirt, right? Right. Yeah. So he's telling you to yeah. greet somebody, yeah. be nice to somebody, and then that same person you be nice to, force them to the nearest part of the road. Yeah. But he said greeting people you don't know. Yeah. So... If he says don't greet a Jew or Christian, first of all, how would you know if somebody is a Jew or a Christian? First of all, yeah, I have the other. Let sense. me let me put the other hadith to show people that we are not lying, to show people that actually Muhammad was a hypocrite. He changed his mind. What else is new, right? Here, it's on the yep. screen. Do not initiate the saluting of Jews and Christians when you meet them, and if you meet them. Any of them on the road, the Jews and the Christians, force him to go to the nearest part of the road. So don't greet them. What did the other hadith say? Sahih hadith, brother. Greet, greeting those you know and those you do not know. That's a huge contradiction. A huge, huge bust for Muhammad. Bam, right. bam. Exactly. That's and I mean, and who the prophet of God? Who the prophet of God? Tells people right. to and force I'll, people to the nearest of the road. That's that's right. disgusting, man. After you told them to greet people that you don't know, why would you tell somebody to greet someone and then you're going to turn around and like just smack them in the face, like push them yeah. to the side of the road? I mean, that's being a hypocrite. You know what I'm saying? So I, I wanted to let people know that because the next time yeah. a Muslim like be bragging about monotheism, monotheism, you just let them know, well, hold up. Your prophet said that's not the greatest aspect of Islam. The greatest aspect of Islam is yeah. feeding people and greeting people that you don't know. Exactly. That's, that's their greatest aspect. So when they always talk about monotheism and you know how when they come against Christianity and try to say that we worship three gods, which we don't. <laughs> no, we like, don't. <laughs> it's um, yeah. hadith to them and say, hold up. Why are you so, you know, bragging about monotheism? And yeah. another thing, they, they always talking about Allah is all powerful. I'm about to get them busted real big. And there's something else you can use. Mm -hmm. Right here. This hadith. Um if you type, if you type this in the search box, there, there are no two Muslims, three of whose children die. No, don't do that because that's complicated. I want Allah will admit them to paradise by virtue of his mercy toward them. Okay, let's see. This then this one, Mr. Rob, this is like a bomb bomb. Because it's gonna show that you can be disobedient to Allah. I'm gonna I'm gonna break it down once once you put it up. Let's see. I think I this found it. I think this is the correct one. It's from uh Sunan Nisai, hadith number 1876, great Sahih, Sahih. Right? Don't say it's life. Yeah. And it says the following, narrated Abu Huraira that the Prophet, not uh, anyone else, Muhammad said it, Muhammad. There are no two Muslims, three of those children die before reaching puberty, but Allah will admit them to paradise by virtue of his mercy towards them. It will be said to them, enter paradise. They will say, not until our parents enter. 
So it will be set enter paradise you and your parents. Go ahead, my friend. All right. Did everybody read that? Did you see that? These kids. And mind you, this is a future prophecy that's to take place. Okay, this is Muhammad saying what Allah will say. So these are the eternal words of Allah. And as you see, Allah will give a command and then he will be given back lip. That's what we call like back talk, because when he gave them a command, they told Allah what to do. They said, yeah. They are it's commanding a, Allah, right? They don't they don't want to listen to Allah. Allah. I mean a, I mean Adam went against God. Just to clarify, my friend, to the people yeah. who are listening. Adam, the first man, right, went against God. God kicked him out, out of heaven, right? He and Eve. But here we have Muslims, right? They are commanded to enter paradise. They say no. And then Allah says Anyway, Allah says, enter paradise together with your parents. I mean, they are going against you. They are not listening to you and you claim to be God, right, Allah? <laughs> and this is from the mouth of Muhammad, guys. Don't say Rob, this is from Rob Christian. This is Muhammad talking. And then Allah allowed them to enter anyway. I mean, I mean, Allah, do you have any backbone? Allah, do you have any backbone? Speaking from Kif, Hira, Hira. Do you have any backbone, Allah? Clearly not. The Prophet right. is making fun of Allah. Muhammad is making fun of Allah himself, my friend. Right? So so everybody listening, next time you're in a conversation with a Muslim, you ask them, is it okay to disobey Allah? And can you disobey Allah and still enter paradise? Yeah. They'll say no. And when they say no, you show them this hadith. And the the another problem with this is because this is a future um event. And because Allah decrees everything, all of the actions of people before they do it, that means Allah decreed them to say what they said. And so that means he he has plenty of time to think about what I'm saying right now, because Allah hears what I'm saying right now. Bro, bro, so wait, just a second. Sorry for this uh, interrupting you. We have a uh, Muslim, I mean, <clears throat> donkey in the chat. He says, Omar, this guy claims to be a Sunni. Guys, watch. This guy claims to be a Sunni. His name is Dali Lee. You can find him in the chat. He says the following. Let me copy what he said. Dali Lee says, and I quote, Omar whipped Abu Huraira for forgeries of hadith, Rob. Donkey, son of a donkey. And I'm not trying to insult any donkeys here. Abu Huraira and Aisha are the biggest narrators of hadith. What are you talking about? Guys, he just called Abu Huraira a fake Liar, and what did Muhammad say about people who lie? Let them take their seat in hellfire. According to you, Abu Huraira will take his seat in hellfire. Allah will send him to hellfire. Do you know what that means? You donkey, do you know what that means? I mean, um, Jacob, um, Jacob, did you just, are you not, are you not shocked? Are you not I'm shocked? Listen, yes, but listen, Mr. Rob, this is what wow. I think about. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rob, but everybody listen. The oh, reason man. why he comment, you know why he made a comment? See, see, I studied psychology in college. Bro, do you see the taqiyya? Do you see the, the, the empty? <laughs> Guys, do you see the, how bankrupt Muslims is? How many times did I tell you? The moment they know they are cornered, it's over. They are going to use taqiyya. They are going to lie. How dare you to insult Abu Huraira? How dare you, Muslim? And the Sahih. The reason why he did that, Mr. Rob, because I, I said something that that really shook him. So he was like, wow, this guy has really said something. So let me say that this Abu wow. Harara is, is not accepted. Let me make up something. He yeah. realized what I said makes a lot of sense. Bro, you and, know, do you know, has, yeah. has this guy have any clue how authentic hadith Abu Huraira produced from his own narration? Right. Almost all, almost all the hadith that we get from Abu Huraira, all, almost all of them, I think almost all of them, right? Are mm -hmm. authentic, sahih. Do you know what you're saying? Donkey, do you know what you're saying? It's sahih, sahih. Do you see it? Abu Huraira said that the Prophet said, sahih, you donkey. Do you have any idea how many hadith we can find in Sahih al-Bukhari from the mouth of Abu Huraira? 
<laughs> look, right. look at this bankrupt Abdul. You Abdul, you have truly no shame. You have no honor, you have no dignity to resort to such da'if taqi. Go wash your mouth. And Mr. Rob, and you know what else? What makes it more devastating? Wow. Because, because listen, this is a future occurrence that's supposed to take place. Mm -hmm. So that means even right now as we speak, Allah is listening to what I'm saying. So he has the authority to correct these people. Mm -hmm. But because Muhammad has already said it, he is stuck. Yeah. So he is hearing me right now. Allah, mm -hmm. you are going to let these people disrespect you mm -hmm. and you still have to do it because if you don't, that means Muhammad is a false prophet because exactly. he the one who said what you will say when they disobey you. Yeah. So this is proving that Allah, he has time right now because this haven't happened yet. This is supposed to happen in the future. Yeah, bro, Allah bro, Phoebe anymore. We have a lady. I think it's a lady. If I'm not sorry, if I, you know, Phoebe anymore saying in the chat, she's addressing Dali. She says, may Allah sahih you, liar. <laughs> That's, That's funny. That That's funny. <laughs> She called me a liar? No, no, no. She called uh, uh, Dali Lee, the guy who was using taqiyya. She says oh. to him, she says to him, may Allah sahih you. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, so I, oh, man. I, I, you guys are killing me. I understand, like, yeah. hold up. Like, but didn't um Muhammad do the same thing when he was coming up with the, um, the number of prayers to do? Yeah. When Moses was like, like 50 and then it, it, it got down to the present day five prayers a day yeah yeah 50 becomes five prayers yeah so they disobey um all our den right of course yeah. okay so but the thing is what makes it so yeah basically allah becomes the the toy of moses the islamic moses right because moses is Basically telling Muhammad, command him, go back and make it less. And then how many times is he's toying with Muhammad? Go back and forth, go back and forth, all the way from 50 prayers, it becomes five, right? As if Allah is, you know, you know it sounds like, uh, you know, try out your like again with Allah. I mean, Allah, really? <laughs> okay. And just to add insult to injury, I, yeah. I think I'll just throw in another um crazy uh, hadith. Yeah. Did you know, Mr. Rob Krishna, that, that women will be the minority in paradise yes they they are going actually the majority of the muslim women uh of the believers are muslim women in hellfire exactly but there is a hadith that even says it. yeah if you type in if you type this in amongst the inmates of paradise the women would form a minority if you type that in it'll come up it's by Imran among, among the people who Amongst the inmates of paradise, the women would form a minority. That's what Muhammad said. But then when I read it, I thought about it. I was like, how can they be the minority if the men will have like 72 virgins? Yeah. Amongst the inmates of the paradise, the women would form a minority. It's from Sahih Muslim. Right. So it is Sahih. So how does that make sense if every man will have... 72 virgins that's the least that's the minimum amount they'll have because mm -hmm. some men because some men will have even more than that yeah that's so how can, that's strange how, that's strange yeah that's a lie right yeah that, of course. that has to be of course right. yeah i mean for one man you have I, and this is the worst kind of muslim right for one yeah. man you will have 72 virgins and every time you deflower them they become virgins you deflower them they become virgins but wait you have one man he has at least 72 the best muslims will get even more thousands and thousands of virgins right right so this doesn't make sense exactly you're correct yeah, so, yeah. yeah that's just another um this is this is devastating man how can you how can you defend this this code how can you defend this it's crazy. Man. I wonder what the Muslim have to say about what I just said about women will be the minority, but they say that every man will have 72 virgins. I wonder how he reconciles that in his mind. I think uh, we forgot about the little boys, bro. Maybe we should count the little boys on top of this. What do you think? The little boys? <laughs> are they going to have... That's a good question. Oh, point. man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah. Are the little boys, are they going to have um, um, virgins? Well, I don't know. I don't 
you know that's i don't i don't want to think about bro it's disgusting man yeah it is <laughs> i don't want to go there bro come on uh oh, man. Oh, man. that's crazy yeah. um and, and also yeah. um just for the record you know that they yeah. believe that there are more than one paradise it, they they believe that there are several paradises yeah seven heavens uh, yeah seven heavens yeah 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 so they they say and they say that yeah. two of the paradises everything inside of it is silver and they say in another paradise it's two other paradises and everything is gold within the paradise yeah. what do you, I'm, uh, just a second why do we need let's say i say the shahada god forbid i say my shahada right and, and a muslim accepts my challenge he shows me an ayah from the quran that says that the gospel is corrupted and i take my shahada right what would I do with gold and silver in heaven? What what are you going to do with gold and silver in heaven, Jacob? Exactly. What are you going to do with it? Why do you need gold and silver where everything is free? Uh, right. Yeah. And and Mr. Amrab, um, see, yeah. it's something else that I wanted to discuss about. See, the problem with that paradise is that. As a matter of fact, pull up this hadith if you if you have time. Um, mm -hmm. type these words in there. Allah will not give them anything that is more beloved to them or delightful than looking upon him. This is a major, major contradiction. Mm -hmm. And I'll explain. Let's see if we can find it, my friend. And it, it's by um it was narrated that. Suhaib, Suhaib, S U H A I B. <clears throat> um, narrated by who you said, Suhaib? Yeah. Okay, I think I found it. Man, I'm fast, man. Yeah, that was we should, God. We should, we should blame Allah for being that fast, bro. It meant for me to say it. That's why I was... <laughs> it was narrated that Suhaib said it's, it's a bit long. But anyway, the Messenger of Allah recited this verse. For those who have done good is the best reward and even more. Then he said, when the people of paradise enter paradise and the people of the fire enter the fire, a caller will cry out, O people of paradise, you have covenant with Allah and he wants to fill, fulfill it. They will say, what is it? Has Allah not made the balance for our good deeds heavy and made our faces bright? and admitted us to paradise and saved us from hell, then the veil will be lifted and they will look upon him. And by Allah, Allah will not give them anything that is more beloved to them or delightful than looking upon him. This is okay. a Sahih Hadith, Hadith number eight one eight seven. Okay. From Sunan Nabi Majah. Sunan Nabi Majah, yeah. Okay, Mr. Ra, yeah. this creates major, major problems. Okay. The first problem being, when they get into paradise, paradise is supposed to be a place of no worry and no stress. Yes. But the moment they have to question something like that, it yeah. creates a situation of worry. Yes. Oh, they're, like, they're like, oh, Allah. So they, so th their minds are not at ease. Yeah. At that exact moment, they have created a... They are questioning. They are questioning. Yeah. Exactly. Questioning. Yeah. They're huh. questioning... Is something wrong that creates mental um, instability. Now, when you get to the the bottom, it says, "Then the veil will be lifted, and they will look upon him. And by Allah, Allah will not give them anything that is more beloved to them or delightful than looking upon him." That yeah. is a contradiction exactly. because if they are looking at Allah. Then, if there's nothing else more delightful than looking upon him, that means their mind, their bodies, yeah. will would not be distracted about drinking wine. It wouldn't be distracted distracted about participating in sex. It wouldn't be distracted about by anything. Yeah. So that so that creates a challenge within paradise. Is having sex with the seventy two virgins? more delightful than looking <laughs> you get what i'm saying yeah it, it creates a 
are imbalanced because yeah. he just said yeah i mean that there were... this is this this you know every hadith is an is a is a dis disaster man every yeah, hadith that we go to every quranic ayah that we go to is a disaster on top i mean you are in <laughs> you're in, you're in paradise you are, you are in the best so-called best place you have allah the pimp providing for you many virgins you will you your best job is to deflower 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 you know kawaib al trabab with swelling breast, Huris with swelling, cabal, right? Uh, weapons of mass destruction, melons, brother. You you should not be worried at all. You know you are you will have the best time of your life, right? No limitation, of, and still you are being. You know you have you know you are, you are depressed basically. You are you are questioning. That doesn't make sense, right? Right, and and if it's not in delightful, let me give you. I like to use metaphors, so everybody listening. It's like this: yeah. if you put your hand on a hot stove, you couldn't think about anything else because the intense heat and pain would draw every nerve and every sense and the fiber of your being yeah. to the burnt sensation that's felt in your hand. Exactly. You couldn't think about anything else. Nothing else in the world would matter or be able to compete with that pain. So exactly. in this hadith, Allah said there would be nothing more delightful than looking at him. So obviously he told a lie. Muhammad told a lie because you can't be you can't take your uh, face off Allah and be having sex with one of them big breasted horries. <laughs> Which, <laughs> Chapter 78, <laughs> ayah 33. It's on the screen. And for yes. this women, you know, I choose any translation, man. It's disgusting. What does this guy says? <laughs> Maidens with purse-shaped breasts. <laughs> A lot of breasts. <laughs> and, and, it's funny, <laughs> and it's funny because most yeah. most know this, but oh, yeah. the mess the message of Allah said, and I'm reading a hadith: the world is the believer's prison, and the infidels jana. <laughs> so he said, for Muslims, not only did he make this world a prison for you. He also called you his slave. Mm -hmm. So you were a slave in prison. And according to what, what your prophet said <laughs> in this hadith. Swelling breast, brother. Swell, swelling breast. <laughs> yeah. So I got to ask a Muslim. I got to ask a Muslim. <laughs> which one? Oh, which man, this, is too, this is too much, guys. Come on, man. But, I mean, if, you, if you're not convinced, you don't want to say the shahada because of the swelling breast, then I don't know what the truth is. Because right. look, Mr. Rob, how are they going to be engaging <laughs> in all of those other activities when he just said nothing would be more delightful than looking at his face? Then it talks about him lifting a veil. But mm -hmm. another problem is, remember um, Sunday I called in and I read the Hadith and it showed that paradise had a consciousness. So when Muslims enter paradise, they are entering an entity called paradise, mm. which has a conscious, which has a consciousness. So if Allah can't enter into his creation, then how will he be, how will he be lifting a veil for them to see his face? Are they going to be looking outside of paradise? Mm. It's contradiction uh, it's, after it's, contradiction after contradiction. Bro, bro, you know, uh, we are live for more than three hours, guys. Uh, uh, Jacob, bro, it's always a blessing to talk to you, bro. Keep always calling us back, but uh, yeah. you know. And can I say one thing? Um, by the way, by the way, these things that uh, I address, if yeah. anybody want to hear it, I'll be going into it in more detail on my channel. You can subscribe to my channel. Just yes, make sure to help the brother out, guys. Always support our warriors. Support uh, Sister K. Support brother Jacob here. He is an amazing channel. Uh, let his channel grow, guys, for the truth. We on, we're not doing this, guys, Muslims, Muslims. We are not doing this because we hate you. We are mocking Islam because Islam mocks your brains. We don't hate you. We hate what Muhammad taught you. We hate what your Islamic leaders are telling you. If you truly respect your brains and you, you respect yourself, leave this evil sex and death and hate cult. We're not doing this to to attack you. We are attacking what being is being taught to you. Leave this sex cult. Leave this sex leader, this cult leader Muhammad. Drop him. 
like a, a rotten tomatoes and come back home to our Lord and Savior. That's what brother Jacob wants. That's what every warrior in Christ wants for you. Please drop Muhammad and come back home to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We will not, God forbid, will never ever talk about swelling breasts and whatnot. God forbid yeah. that's an insult. So yeah, so you know, just just uh, be on the lookout for this video. I'm gonna I'm gonna post this video, and and yeah. people, if you want to subscribe to my channel, just hit the icon. And one last thing to any Muslim, you know, I don't mind I'm um, doing a live debate with a Muslim on anything that I say. You go to my channel, you'll see all of the good videos that just bust Islam up completely. I don't mind yeah. doing a live. Debate. Like, Brother Jacob, like, people are asking how they can find your channel. Uh, how can well, they find you? You just look at look up. You see me in a. Ch let me let me leave a. Uh, yeah, leave a leave a comment, me, and guys. If you click on his name, then uh, you can go to his uh, channel. Yeah. Just leave. A, I just said. Hey, so you see the um. The false the prophet, arrow? yeah. The false prophet, yeah. yeah. That one. Prophet, that's my channel. So you just click on that icon, yeah. and you hit subscribe, and you'll see all of the all of the videos. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Support the brother out, guys. He's an amazing uh, debater. He also goes to speakers corner, right, Jacob? Yes. yes. No, no, I don't no? live in the UK. I, I oh, did you a, don't? I, okay, okay, okay. Sorry. Yeah, I did a video with um Sister K. Ah, uh, okay. Sister. That's what you did. I see. I see. Support her channel too. Um, Subscribe to K. So For sure. Channel. K is amazing too. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, it's rad to get a woman yeah. that has that much interest in something like this in the first place. So you got to, when you see stuff like that, you got to support it, you know? Amen. Amen. True to that. Thank you for calling my friend, Jacob. Keep calling us back. It's always a, a blessing to go through some sources so we can uh, show everybody that, you know, Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet who kept busting himself over and over. And, uh, you know, we, we're not doing this for hate. We're doing this out of love. And that's the, the only thing we do. We are doing this for the truth and love, not for hate. Right. right. No doubt. Peace and blessings right. and will do. Thanks, my friend. God bless you. Appreciate your call. See you. Bye Appreciate it. Bye bye, my Goodbye. Friend. Goodbye. Bye. Guys, uh, I think we had uh, amazing calls today. God is good. Uh, I have a couple missed calls, guys. I know. Uh, let me let me call our dear sister Vanessa, and then we'll wrap this up, guys. You know, I don't want to. Uh... Vanessa, I'm going to call you, dear sister Vanessa. Vanessa, are you there, sister? I'm trying to call you. Hmm, not working, why? Can you call me back, Vanessa? Okay, she's calling me. You're live on air, sister, welcome. Hello, brother Rob, how are you? I'm good, we're, f we're having fun today, you know. You heard the... Uh, you heard the callers, right? Uh, you know, uh, people are really shocked that till today in 2020, Muslims are believing the nonsense of Muhammad. How can you respect your brains and accept this nonsense? This brainwashing. I was, I, I just wanted to uh, mm. call in quickly and say, be careful what you say. <laughs> be careful what you say. Mm. If you say you want to take the sh shahada, <laughs> you know, <laughs> You know how the devil works. Yeah, I know, but you know, we are we are doing this for, it's for gonna years, yeah. very fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let them. We are we are live. Did you hear any Muslim call me to refute me, or did you see any Muslim accept my challenge? You know, clearly they have nothing to say. So they have nothing to say. Yeah, they, they, have, they are afraid. Mm. They are afraid. They don't want to be. They don't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> no. Don't worry, so, sister. If you say I'll, if you say <laughs> I'll take the shahada, yeah. you will be surprised. By the time you wake up tomorrow, yeah. the, the Islamists will compel all their followers to to bring their uh, Qurans and they'll burn yeah. them up as Usman did. Well, well, you know what I'm going to do, sister, like the you mentioned the story of uh, the Christians of Najran. There was a uh, group of people, Christians, for, uh, according to Islamic story, it's also in the Quran, group of people uh, from Najran, Christians, they challenged Muhammad for a debate. And Muhammad said, I have no answer for you now. It may, I mean, imagine, this is a so-called prophet of Allah, <laughs> so-called prophet yeah. of God. He has no answers. They have to wait for his answer. So he goes back uh, away. Then comes back later. He says, okay, bring your wives, bring your daughters, bring your animals, and 
That's it. I mean, if you if their prophet cannot accept the debate, what about the Muslims, right? <laughs> Brother, but you don't know what that means. Yeah. Bring your bring your daughters, bring your animals could mean. Bring them on top of your head. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And I'll take your properties. <laughs> it could be that, you know. You never know. Yeah, where's the debate? There's no debate, brother. <laughs> uh, someone is so, going to be nothing but a cursing party. Yeah, exactly. Because there's a hadith. I think I can I can show the hadith on the screen, Sister Vanessa. There's a hadith that says that every every morning Muhammad wakes, he starts to curse such and such. You know, it's going to be a cursing party. Yeah. Let's see if I can uh, find there a hadith. Is another, yeah. There is another one that says, there mm. is another one that says, uh, when he was dying, yeah. that he was cursing, he was cursing Jews and Christians yeah. on his dying bed. I remember uh, Christian Prince mentioning something like that, yeah. but I don't have the hadith in, in, in mind. <laughs> that he was cursing, he was cursing Christians and Jews. Yeah. No, no, no. It was, it was, it was um, David Wood that says the last, the last things, Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, yeah. uh, what's his name, Nabil, Na, Na, Nabil Qureshi, yeah, yeah. Uh, the late died, Nabil yeah, Qureshi, yeah. and Jesus Christ. The last thing they said, and the last thing um, uh, Muhammad said was like cursing Jews and Christians yeah. or, or telling the people to kill Jews and Christians, something like that. Really hateful thing that I thought you are dying and you still have the guts to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no so brother, mm -hmm. don't, don't, don't be surprised. You might wake up tomorrow. You might find a, 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 a uh, a verse in the Quran that says, uh, well, I, ho I hope, I hope Fifi will, I hope will Fifi will accept the challenge. I hope, I really hope. <laughs> what, what if they burn out the Qurans and they have one new Quran now that has all that? Uh, new, new, a new Quran, yeah, they will revise the Quran, change it like uh, the, you know, like Al Hajjaj, change it like the Al Azhar University uh, in 1924 25. They drop the old Qurans, they throw the old Qurans in the Nile River. And they make a new one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. But then we cannot do anything, yeah. <laughs> Lord of Let's mercy. take the shahada. Yeah. God forbid. Yeah, that's nice. You okay. wanna... Yeah, sister. <clears throat> I don't. I don't have. I don't have a lot to say. I just wanted to say that. Yeah. Just to, Thank you for your to, call. That's that's funny, sister. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I Thank enjoyed you. it. Bye bye. Thank you for calling. Yeah. God bless you. Have a nice day. Bye, bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Well, guys, uh, thank you for your calls. Thank you for your donations. Thank you for your amazing support. Pray for our admins. Pray for our audience, guys. Keep us all in your prayers. Keep all the warriors in your prayers. May God bless you and bless your loved ones in these difficult times, in the time of the coronavirus. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Keep your children safe. Don't lose faith. Stay strong. And I think if the Lord wills, we'll have many amazing videos and live shows to come. I hope you enjoyed our video, guys, today. I hope you enjoyed the live show. Please make sure, if you didn't already, Subscribe, smash that like button and click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live. Thank you. Peace of Christ to all of you. Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet. Islam is a created cult for one man for his own sexual desires 1400 years ago. Unfortunately, till today Muslims are still brainwashed from that hate, disgusting sex and death cult. Please Muslims, we're not doing this because we hate you. We are doing this out of love. We are doing this because we want you to be saved like we are saved through the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord and, he and Savior Jesus Christ. Every knee will bow and proclaim that Jesus is Lord. May Jesus bless you and your children, your loved ones. And 
Lord willing, we will see each other in another amazing live show. God bless.